249 episodes of the Unranked Podcast. This is our penultimate episode of the season in the normal format. I know there's a lot of qualifiers there, and we'll get to explain soon. I'm Christian Humes. Here we have Alex Marinello joining me in the Hat Club today. You. Hashtag Hat Club. And uh, we got Dan Ween, who's got that those nice long locks going. Oh, there we go. Triple Hat, hat Club. Club. You look like you're 12. All of a sudden, with that hat, you just look like you're 12. <laughs> it doesn't even fit on my head. No, it this doesn't. This hat literally oh cannot go down. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what hat is that? It's a 1967-style Baltimore Orioles hat. Uh, it was the closest one to me when I reached over into my closet. I like a lot of retro logos. That's a good one. This was a good I, I, it, I went out of my way to get this one, and I got to say, I wish it fit my head. I there's been able to there's wear it. a there's something unique about a lot of the like sort of minimalist retro logos. I feel like a lot of sports logos back in the day were very simple, and then they got really complicated from the '80s to like the early 2000s, and now they're going way back again to being very simple. Did like, you remember like when the Islanders Fisherman came out? That was well, one yeah, of the that was the, that was the mid '90s. That was a fucking disaster. That was um, they had a lot of ownership turnover and one of the new owners was like let's make a mascot and try to make it a thing and they came up with the fishermen because hmm. that's what long island is just a bunch of fishermen that's yeah, all we are yeah here. definitely that's <laughs> that's all we are <laughs> that's definitely what long island is today still is always was that's right um well, damn what's your favorite sports logo defunct or not like <sighs> favorite logo uh Oof. I don't know. This is I'll let you simmer on it. Yeah, let me I'll let you simmer on it. My favorite is the Expos. I really like okay, the way that one. they just like flow together, the, the lines uh, and the colors. I think it's a very good, very good logo. You what? think about it. If it pops into your head, you let us know. If not, you yeah. can report back next week. I'm thinking like other sports too now, trying to like just get all it, it, it is it is an ambiguous question if you come up I with kinda, it, there's there's a I lot to like, choose from for you this is just a good one why not uh i like the okay. calgary flames logo it's just like a fun the like calgary a sea on fire flames it's simple but i like it let me pull this up here Ooh. uh for those of you at home please google i'm t- I'm turning off my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share with everybody right now. Oh right? yeah. You want to see it? I know you want to see it. I'm gonna. I'll show it to you if mm. you want to see it. I'm gonna screen share like this so everyone can see it. Oh. A little flame and see. So this is the Calgary Flames right mm. here. Yeah, like it's simple. I get it. Right. It's but like Calgary uh, and it's flames. It's fine. A little bit like a Crest toothpaste. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What is uh? Who were the Whalers? Hartford. That was uh. Hartford they're now Whalers. the Carolina Hurricanes. The Whalers. They I don't, like, I don't think I like their logo that much. Oh, I, I like how simple it is. Hmm. They kind of stole a lot of their look from. If you look up uh, the Vancouver Canucks logo. Holy shit! It's this very. Jer- well, I mean, there's. So, like, there's a bunch this of different iterations of them, one. but, like, uh, there's kind of a different one somewhere that looks similar. They've gone through, like, so many over the years. Because at the time the Whalers existed, they, they used different colors. They used those, like, orange, red, and black colors. Mm-hmm. And then when the Whalers left, they changed over to, like, the blue, green, and white. They kind of stole their colors. Mm. And they have, like, what looks like a whale coming out of their Yeah, sea. they do... Well, they do. Ha- <laughs> you're right. The color wise, they stole it. But the thing I like about it is they have the H in the negative space with the W nice. and it's supposed to be like a whale. I, that's what I think is really. nice. Oh, if you like that, tr- go to Minnesota Wild. They have some interesting stuff they did with their logo, like some hidden stuff that I didn't what see right away. What sport is that? It's hockey. It's also hockey. It's hockey. Have the best logos. <laughs> they, they're pretty good with logos, honestly. Um, so if you look inside the. Uh, oh, so oh, you yes. have. Yeah. So you have like the North Star, which was their old team in the eye. Mm-hmm. You ha- yeah. I like so this. You got a lot of, it's just like a nice simple logo. With you. There's some cool shit going on. Very cool. I don't know. That's what awesome. It's well, a good logo. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to be able to see any of this show, our Patreon is going to be free for all listeners and viewers. If you were a current subscriber and you didn't get your refund, 
Uh, Patreon has a very weird system on how to do that, so we need to send it to you directly. So send us a message. We already sent you a message for that. And next month as well, because we're celebrating the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, 2021, and season three of the Unranked Podcast will also be free if you're a current subscriber. Auto Renew has been turned off for next month, so you won't be charged next month either. Do you think uh, we have the else, longest seasons check it out. of any series? Oh, that's a good question. We definitely have longer seasons than years. Like, the, a year has four seasons, and they last approximately, mm-hmm. what, like 90 mm-hmm. days? Then so we, we got season uh, one. We had season two. We're about to go to season three now. Each, I mean, season one was 151 episodes long, <laughs> right? Season two, we might be about 100. Should we call Guinness? Do we need to call Guinness? I think we might have to. What, what season of the Unranked Podcast, assuming it were to continue forever, mm-hmm. what season of the Unranked Podcast would be the most amount of episodes? I would have season to guess one. one. It would be season five. Really? What, season they five? They did 157 Pokemon in, <laughs> in generation five. 157 new Pokemon, Pokemon in generation five? Wow. Gen or at least five new Pokedex was, entries. It was, Gen five black and white actually is, I think, my favorite outside of the beginning two gens because mm-hmm. they treated it kind of like a reboot. It was the first like animated battles at all. Like the Pokemon actually moved in the animations and they had like semi 3D like structures in the world. And you didn't get any old Pokemon. They made it, that's why they did a big enough library mm-hmm. of Pokemon mm-hmm. so that there were no old Pokemon until the post game. Right. So if we did get to season five, when would that be? Uh, I believe that's around the end of 500. Okay. So what are we at now? We're at 250, so yeah. roughly. So yeah. that would be another four years? Another, yeah, five another, years. Yeah. Five another years. five years. Yeah. So and then that years. would be a three-year season. Hopefully <laughs> yeah, <so> my, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully my student loans are paid off by then. Tuna, Tuna's going to have a kid <laughs> thinking about colleges by the time we're nearing the end of season five. <laughs> Put into that 529 plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, so let's let's uh, let's talk about today's Pokemon. Our 249th Pokemon, Lugia. Lugs. I really like Lugia. It's the first legendary yeah. Pokemon of this generation that we got in it. What do you guys think about this great little bird or big bird? Or I, big bird. I love the big hand wings. Mm. Yeah, I like Lugs. Yes. It looks like two big back scratchers. Yes. Lugia, it is, so it's a psychic flying. I only knew Lugia from Smash. Oh. Because I didn't right, actually. Right, didn't. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I love Lugia. I think Lugia is great. It's great little pokes. My, my new favorite fact about Lugia is mm. its height. Because they didn't just make it 17 feet tall. They made it 17 feet and one inch tall. <laughs> right. <laughs> Add that extra inch. Make it more realistic. One of the interesting things to me about Lugia is visually, I think you'd be able to guess that maybe it's psychic. You also might guess mm. that it's ice. Mm. Mm-hmm. Kind of mm. like what happened with Suicune previously. But coloring, it is like Mewtwo in the sort of like white and purples. Right. Um, but there's not a whole lot about it that's really psychic except the typing. In fact, it does, it is much more of a flying type Pokemon or like a water flying type Pokemon, especially because of the lore. It deals more um, with l- like water. Uh, personally, this this Pokemon and then the next bird, uh, Ho-Oh, mm-hmm. are the two for this generation. I like Ho-Oh. I think there's a lot more about its story that's interesting than Lugia, mm-hmm. but I think Lugia is the better design. I think Lugia looks cooler. Dan, you pointed out the hands. I think Lugia looks almost like if you took the skeleton of a whale and like how mm-hmm. the end of the fins looks like fingers, Lugia looks like if you took a whale but made it more like a bird. It has that like very like it has like a belly. You know, it's like if someone took the skeleton of a whale but then didn't give it the giant chest and made it a bird <laughs> instead. If they didn't know like what animal it was. Honestly, all I can think of right now, looking at it, is uh, it kind of looks like a dragon, but like a dragon that would be on like regular show doing like the oh thing with both of its arms. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, I could see the sort of like strange. It's got Andre the Giant hands. Body shape. Yeah, it has strange body. Like the the body the proportions are wild. Because it's not just yeah. like its wings. Like those are 
literally fingers in the shape of a hand of a human hand so he's got andre the giant hands um and according to the trivia here right Mm -hmm. uh despite not being a water type lugia has occasionally been depicted as a water type in the trading card game can you believe it can you believe it Yes. Well, so here's the thing. The the trading card game only has nine typings, so a lot of the subclasses and things get mixed together. So you That's can true, because there's only so many mana, I guess, they could have. Right. And then the interesting thing about that is Lugia <laughs> represents the sea because it's supposed to live between the ocean. Like, What's that's that where mean? it gets its powers from the waves. It lives underwater. Like, a lot of the time, like, when it's depicted in the anime, like, you'll see, like, the waves coming and, like, it, like, comes out of the water sometimes. Oh, okay. Um, it's, it's very strange. I don't know if they necessarily always meant for it to be tied to OO's story mm. and, or for it to, like, there is there is speculation online that maybe this was, like, a lot of other Pokemon decisions. They were like, well, this should definitely be a legendary. And, like, that's our other bird. And there we go. Slap it in there. So did you, so the Make name origin, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to read right from Bulbapedia. L- Lugia may be derived from lutium, a silverish element, which in turn is named Ooh. after Lutia, or maybe Lucia, the Roman name for Paris, the city of light. It may also involve Lugio, sounds like Lugio, Latin for to lie dormant, alluding to the way Lugia lies at the bottom of the sea. Luna, Latin for moon, and Beluga, whale. I got to say, that is a there lot go, well. of things it's named after. Well, it's a lot of guesses on what it's named after. I think someone just, like, hocked one, and that's what they came up with. That's Every single time you say Lugia, I do think of hocked a Lugs. Or just uh, woman Luigi. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. That would be, like, L- Lugia. Luigi, yeah, it's, it's close Could enough. be. Luiga. Close enough. <laughs> Luiga. <laughs> Uh, so that's what we have this week. Next week is going to be the other legendary, and it just looks it. there's only legendary. two more Pokemon left. It just looks. I I think Pokemon does a very yeah. good job at designing their legendary Pokemon because if you didn't totally tell me agree. it was a legendary Pokemon, and I put it in front of you, I probably would have picked it as a legendary Pokemon. Totally agree. Uh, you know what I think part of that is. Um, that? So a lot of powerful Pokemon typically have evolutions. They do. So a lot of those evolutions are more complex than earlier predecessors, and they tie in elements from the first and then the second one into the third one. Okay. Whereas if you're just making a blank slate Pokemon that's not going to have any evolutions, Mm -hmm. you can go for like a more simple design in a lot of ways that doesn't have to incorporate anything else that came before it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to have started somewhere else. It's like Mm -hmm. this is the idea complete it's a complete single design it's not we're going to come up with three different designs that have to tie together and like evolve the pokemon and its design in some way this is really what cool is this is the mega evolution oh i didn't know lugia had a mega apparently it does it hmm. says mega lugia unless it's fake it could be fake but Chris. who knows What's th- what's the word, Chris? I wasn't aware it had a mega, but maybe it does. It says mm. Pokemon ID eight two four nine. Yeah, which that that would be. I don't know what game that would have been added in. Uh, let's see what it says. Uh, I don't know, folks. Pokemon Q. This might be fake. It might be <laughs> fake, but it has a lot of stats. It for might sure. be a fake Pokemon. <laughs> Might be a fake Amon. I don't. Well. Be, well, the only reason I, I pause to jump out and say it doesn't is because Latios and Latios, which remind me of Lugia, yeah. have a mega evolution and they are legendary Pokemon. So it's, right. it's curious that like, OK, well, there is precedent for oh, okay. legendary Pokemon having it. But I don't think that is a real Pokemon. It's no, saying... It that it was released as part of the 17th Mass Click Weekend mm, so uh, bullshit. in the form of a Mega Stone. Hmm. I don't know. It says if you use the Lugia Knight Q, you can upgrade it in, 
I, I don't even know where this is talking about. This is so crazy. I, I can't wait till we get corrections. I, I you know what? Whatever. Five bucks. Someone drew it. It looks cool. That's all I care about. Mm. So it's on something called Pokemon Farm Q. Which I, I don't I, know what I that is. I think this is a fan community. Okay. And not. It's not a real anything thing. Else. But okay. it, it is possible it's like a trading card game thing. It's not, as far as I'm aware, it's not in any game. So I don't see anything saying anywhere else. But I also don't want to sit here and spend forever trying to find that. So not yeah, Alex, it. you're right. Correct us if we're wrong. Uh, I don't think it is. Maybe it is. Who knows? Not worth it. <laughs> what is going on, boys? What's the word? Um, I guess I'll go first. Let's see. Closing in on closing in on the house. Uh, we should be mm-hmm. closing... Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, hopefully next week, if that's the case. Probably won't be on the episode um, for next week, although maybe I will. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how things next roll. Next week's not our not our uh, whatever we're doing, is it? What are we doing? No, with I don't think so. No, we, we're going to figure that out. So okay. we got to figure that out. Good. But, um, uh, uh, you know, I asked somebody to fucking lower the volume on the TV. It goes right back up. Very soon. This won't be a problem. But, anymore. Uh, yeah, this won't be a problem anymore, hopefully. Um. You, you, you would imagine think. it is. Imagine would, like he gets a basement and she's all the way upstairs and it's just somehow louder. Yeah. <laughs> or the basement's just loud because there's like the heater in there. Right. And right the washer right. and dryer going. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Whole new host of problems. Right. New, I'm sure right. All, all, all new bag of issues. Suck. All new bag of issues. Um, <laughs> so we watched a couple things. We watched The Undoing. Thought it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Pretty good show. Pretty mm-hmm. solid show. Um, Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant. Uh, Murder mystery, pretty pretty standard, pretty like Pretty Little Lies esque, you know. Um, I've realized that I have like a reading season now these days. I get my reading season is from late spring to early fall, and now we're in the no more reading season. You don't read indoors. Don't, well, because of how small this apartment is, no. Because um, usually the reading is done outside, and now that I don't have ah, outside okay. anymore, and it is too cold, and it gets dark at five fucking yeah. o'clock, or even before that, I hate it. Uh, can't do it. So, and I can't sit here and read because it's just too small here. Um, anything else? Oh, I got got the new iPad, new iPad Air. Got very the, nice. Got the new iPad. Very exciting. Um, You'll be recording, doing your video on that. I'm not. I'm doing my video on Brit's iPad, no, no. but I'm <laughs> recording. In the future, you will. Yeah, yeah, on the future, yes. Um, but yeah, the picture quality, I mean, it's amazing. It's great. Mm-hmm. Recommend. Uh, what else? Making my way through uh, Valhalla. Nothing really to say there other than that I love the game. I'm having a lot of fun in it. And, uh, you know, work's been okay, winding down a little bit in the, this month of December, trying to get everything wrapped up before I take some time off. That's it, boys. That's it. That's really it. I haven't really done anything else. Um, what have you guys been doing? How did you find AstroBot? Because you sent you, oh, Astro's shit. Playroom. You sent us a text saying that you really like it. Yeah, so we, I loved Astro's Playroom. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I did everything there was to do in it, and now I'm trying to beat your score, your time. I stopped for a little bit because it was getting really frustrating. Um, because I saw what it you is. did. It is. It's very I, frustrating. Well, because I saw what you did. <laughs> Because I saw what you did, and I was like, "Oh mm-hmm. fuck!" Like, all right, I have to, pr- I have to, I have to master this somehow. Somehow, I've got to figure this out. And I-, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm sure you do. My hands get very sweaty when I play. And oh, I'm t- having many hand issues with this. Yeah, controller. so I keep <laughs> like wiping my hands. O- I'm like, should I buy gloves at this point? Um, and I will say, as much as I have made fun of you. For being like, oh, it's fuck you, Chris. Like, the controller's fine. Like, get over it, get over it, get over it. When you're trying to platform and you're trying to make pinpoint turns, it's almost stupidly impossible to do so on the PlayStation controller. It doesn't make any Thank sense you. to platform with this controller. If, like, Astro's Playroom, everything other than these speed runs for me was easy. It's fine. It's, you know, leisurely stroll through this platforming game. But when you're actually trying to you know beat your friend's record on a speed run and your thumb is slipping off the goddamn thing and you're using your other hand to m- keep the stick where it is so you can move your I thumb. was going to bring that up today. It's I was going to bring so that up. So stupid. It is so I, dumb. 
there are parts of the course because you can't ever lift your finger. You have yes. to always be moving forward because you're doing yes. a speed run. But there's parts where, like, it always ends up on the side of my thumb eventually, mm-hmm. like yes, the stick. Yep. I'm, like, using the yep. outside of my finger. I can't yes. keep it on the top. Yes. Um, it's impossible. And so then it, it's, like, A, the side of my finger after, like, two hours starts to hurt. Yes. Uh, and then B, <laughs> there are, like, by the time I get to that first bridge, uh-huh. I'm, like, already starting to slip it a right, little bit. Too. And I'm, like... yeah. Okay, this is the jump where while I'm in the air and I'm moving forward, I know I have maybe just enough time to lift it and put it back down. Right. But now for the speed run time that I'm trying to do, uh-huh. I can't even do that jump that way. So now I have to quickly take my other finger after I make the jump, yeah. put it onto that thumbstick to hold it so that I can put my finger back. Mm-hmm. I was using two hands. Yeah, it's stupid. Using two hands. It's a very stupid controller for this. Very stupid. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That makes me feel no, it very vindicated, it's vindicated because. Yeah. The other yeah. night when Matt, uh, High Plays, and Legend of Joe had all beat like, the times that I had set. So then mm-hmm. I was like, okay, i got to go clear all these out again get first again. Right. Um, which Matt uh, was showboating and was like, oh, I beat yours. And then I beat his again. And he was like, we'll see. And he has not gotten back and done that yet. Uh, so we'll see, Matt, if you can beat it or not. It was very hard. It was very fucking hard to do. And on at least two of those courses... Every, to beat it, I could not do it without using both hands. I had to use the other thumb on a single thumbstick just to be able to correct myself. And it's really fucking stupid. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Really dumb. Totally. Yeah. And the other the other place I've run into it, and it's the only other place, is when I'm playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. Sometimes when I'm navigating and I'm in the middle of a fight and I'm trying to like quickly, like very similar, like I need to keep moving, I'm having to do the same thing. Yeah. So I could the imagine. second there is a third party controller, I don't care if it's even like last generation, Sony put out a pro controller, kind of like the elite, but they didn't make it. They allowed a third party brand. I think it was Scuff to make it and they like officially licensed it. Uh, guess what? It was asymmetrical sticks. The second there's something like that available again, I don't care if it's $200 like that mm-hmm. one was. I will whatever it costs because mm-hmm. I cannot play the system the way I want it to. Yeah, it sucks. I agree. But it's a great game. Yeah, it's a fantastic game. I mean, the only thing I have yeah. left to do is beat your scores, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it. So I hope you do, because I actually really like going back and just playing the same level over yeah. and over to try to beat the time. It is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dan, I think like this, to me, is the thing Fall Guys needs. Is Fall Guys needs times for all the courses. So that like even if you can just see yeah. your friends' times, that would be... I would love to have that information. Yeah, it's not, not a bad idea. I yeah. I wouldn't mind it. Like, it would be fun to see, like, the fastest anyone's ever done the course. The only problem is then, like, if you're doing, like, an awesome run and then just someone else comes and fucks you over, you're going to be so pissed. Right, yeah, totally. I mean, that's definitely true, but, I mean, I guess I guess they could always add, like, a side one where you could just play the yeah, course Yeah, just by yourself. Because then you could actually practice the courses, too, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think I've yeah. been complaining about the whole time. <laughs> Which I could totally see them adding something like that because they want to keep the balance of the game fair enough that it's not too off-putting. But as the game starts to get more complicated, maybe the best way to do that is to just have a training course mode, which could have a timer, and then people could just keep playing the courses over and over. Mm-hmm. So that would be dope. I would like that. Um, so that's it for you, Alex? Yeah, I don't think I really did anything else. It's been a cool. yeah, slow kind of, I guess. I don't know. Danny boy, uh, let's see. I um, do like the stuff that's not video games first. I, I locked up first place in two of the fantasy football leagues I'm in, the ones Whoa. that are for the most money. So that's good. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. So one of them I dominated. The other one we kind of got lucky and just kept winning somehow. Uh, me and my partner in that that le- that league. Um, what else was there? The uh, I played a few games this week. I don't know if I should get into that now or wait till the next thing. There but like, no, uh, no, next, okay, because we used to do like random then games. No, we're not doing but, that anymore. Uh, okay, so uh, I played, so uh, so like the Rad Does Games guys did like a a games like a, a game show oh, stream. Right. So like yep. I played a little Wheel of Fortune on theirs. I uh, I won a uh, one of the bids doing the one dollar more thing to get on, get a little prize action going. You know, okay, like when you're okay. all bidding like on the first item, you're like. Yeah, someone goes uh, like six fifty, five twenty five, seven hundred. You go seven oh one. You fuck over the guy. 
You uh, motherfucker. You mean Price is Right. So, didn't I say Price is Right? You said Wheel you said of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, oh, shit. That is wrong. There was no Wheel of Fortune. It's Price is Right. Once he did, once he what said the, the plus hell? one, I knew what he was yeah, talking yeah, about. Well, there was no Wheel of Fortune. One. I'm tired. I wake up at 4 a.m. every day and get two hours of sleep during the week. <laughs> Leave me alone. Holy crap. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, Price is Right, and then uh, right, I th- I got like the simplest game, which was kind of disappointing because you know how like you can get like Plinko, you can get like guess these nine items, and you gain things, and you can go back what, and guess. I got the you do this or the, that. You know, it was like a train car thing, and it was like move the train car left or right to get the numbers. Oh yeah, up. stupid. And so lined them up correct, and then Yay. I I didn't do well on the wheel because it's random. Oh. So <laughs> mm. that was the end of that. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, I played Spirit of the North, which was uh, this game that was made for the PS4 last year, and they enhanced it for the PS5. They added in vibrations, I guess, is really all they did, uh, for the new PS5 <laughs> okay. controller. Uh, it looks really nice. It played a little wonky, and it was super frustrating, because the game never really tells you what's going on or what you have to do. Like, mm-hmm. it kind of just expects you to figure everything out on the way. Mm-hmm. Like, the first 25 minutes, I'm just following a ghost around to to get to the part where I have powers, and then I have powers. And then you're just going through these, like, little puzzle worlds or something like that. And, like, not really worlds, but, like, areas of the map. Mm-hmm. And I got stuck mm-hmm. on one after five hours of playing and went, okay, this is time to stop for now. But I'm in it, like, decently far into the game. <laughs> have you checked to see if they have those, like, health tip things? Because now the PS5, it's, like, one of the coolest things that's on there. It's, like, if you get stuck or you're confused, you can kind of go. There's, like, a in the pause button. I think it may or may not be under the cards, but there's, like, built-in, like, help tips and guides for games. Now. I don't think this has that. This this game, when I was reading about it, it was one of the, the things people were saying was, like, there's... You technically have a guide. Like, you have this glowing thing next to you the whole time. But it mm. basically stands next to you until occasionally and rarely it'll tell you where to go. But, like, I got stuck on a point where I was like, I don't think this is the right place to go. It could be. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Or maybe I'm just trying the wrong thing for a half hour. And I just went, okay, time to stop. <laughs> so I'll yeah. probably just look it up on YouTube or something and then see where I'm supposed to be going at that point. Perfect. But uh, That's awesome, yeah. though. And that's about it. And then we're oh, I I got all my uh, my stuff ready now. My 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 computer's all set up. My PC. Oh. I got yeah. I got a webcam. I got uh, oh, really boy. everything's good. Yeah, everything's you ready start to go. Recording on that. You have awesome. a better camera. Uh, the only problem is my setup over there is going to be interesting because of the way my room is. <laughs> okay. So like, I'm going to have to be sitting on my bed when I play, like I normally am. Yeah. So. After X amount of hours, it's going to hurt my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So for yeah. recording especially, I'd rather be in this chair, this nice yeah. chair I'm sitting in. Yeah, that's fair. On it. <laughs> you know, they sell they sell these, like, chairs now because probably because it's so many people from work from home that don't have, like, room, um, which it's basically like a back and a seat part that can, like, fold but then lock up. So, like, you can just, like put it on your bed so that you can like it'll actually sit you right. up on your bed but is it going to stay in place or is it going to slowly slip back until i fall down I, be- I believe it's supposed to stay in place i think that's the whole point of the bottom part because then your kind of weight is actually okay that so that wouldn't be bad that wouldn't be terrible yeah i mean you can right look now, into it i've, yeah. I've never I have one used of those them. like soft pillowy backs right now kind yeah. of like those little fake couch back things the two arms i don't know what to mm-hmm. call it it's this guy since everyone can watch this I have this guy. The hu- husband pillow or something, right? You know what that's yeah, called? Yeah, something like that. So I use that occasionally when I'm like watching TV, but when I'm playing video games, I'm sitting up and like forward and hurting my back. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's not good. At some point, you'll need to make sure you have something good for your back because it's just going to get fucking wrecked. Is that Milo? not already. Yes, it is Milo. Yes, I guessed the cat correctly. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, if I was the one making the game today, Dan's, Dan's uh. in the lead already. Oh my God. Dan's automatically <laughs> won the tiebreak. <laughs> All right. Chris, what do you got for us? Uh, so interestingly, speaking of game shows, I checked out uh, the new um, Supermarket Sweep. I had oh, not okay. watched the new Supermarket Sweep. Um, gosh, what is the host's name? Oh, how is it? Leslie Jones. Out of my head. Leslie, Leslie jo- Jones. Thank yeah. you. So I had concerns about like the high energy of Leslie Jones for that show. I think the nice thing about the original was kind of like how 
sort of basic it is in many ways, uh, but it works. I feel like the first episode was a little bit more high energy than I wanted. And there's also a point where like the contestants are so over the top, like they're running through the supermarket so much more aggressively than they were back in the day to try to win that the girl just, she's like between aisles running um, through like the crossroad between aisles, like the intersection and another guy's coming down one of the aisles with his cart, just pushing it completely forward, not looking. And she's just like holding her inflatable and she just gets railed by this guy's car and knocked to the ground. <laughs> and like, you see the camera guys, like they pull out, like they're all just like, Oh shit. <laughs> like, so to summarize, I was shocked that she was not hurt. There's people getting shocked. railed and people coming. Oh yeah. The okay. whole time. Um, yeah. But my favorite I mean, touch actually is there's like a secondary host that she has that like he plays like the security guard at the thing. And there's like he's like plays like the checkout guy. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's good. I think if you like the original supermarket sweep, it's obviously more high energy because it's also modern, but it's still like very entertaining. And then I, I just let it autoplay on Hulu and ended up watching Card Sharks, which is the new a one? Joel McHale game yeah. show, yeah. Oh, which yeah. I'd never seen. Love this. Love, Love it. it, huh? Love have you, it. have you ever seen I the like old Gabe version of it? Um, no. Oh, I this was like a, in the 70s. It was around two. They oh, it back. it's good. It's just a Maybe very 80s. simple card over under game. Like, yeah. it is. Yep. There's almost nothing Do you think the next card's going to be this. higher or lower than this seven? Yeah. Or do you want to freeze? It's awesome, though. Yep. It's really good. Um, so I watched that. I obviously watched Mandalorian. Uh, very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, it looks like we have Can I say really quick, guest. though? I think it's interesting that they, a lot of these successful game shows are just mini games on The Price is Right. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's definitely true. Tom, thank you for joining the show. Hi, Tom. Welcome back. Whoa. I dropped in with parachuting in. You look like <laughs> um, oh well, I gotta get the uh, the uh, flight simulator controls out of the fucking cupboard, and then I'll complete the look. cupboard. Oh my god! What about? Oh. Uh, well, never mind. He kind of looks like he's in the like the storage bay mm. of, a co of like a, a big <laughs> where they store all the knickknacks. Yeah. Have you ever seen that um, movie? The the guy in the cupboard. I've seen the Indian in the cupboard. Isn't that an all Kelly? The Native American album? in the cupboard. That's well, the movie was guy. called The Indian in the Cupboard. <laughs> yeah. I said guy in the cupboard. I don't come up you with ever, titles to movies. You ever see movies. that movie, Tom? No, I have not. I have not. What about was Last of the Mohicans? Toy Story? Was that a pre-Toy Story movie? With like... I was about to say, does that have Tim Allen in it? I, I don't know. Or does that have, does that have no. someone from Home Improvement? I don't think it has anyone famous in it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anybody famous that was in that movie. Mm. I'm looking it up now, though. So Tom, guess basically, he would, put, he would put figurines mm -hmm. into the cupboard, turn the key... Right, and then oh. when he then when he turned the key and he opened it, they would come to life. Wow! What? Who's in it? Dan seems to have discovered something. Okay, so there's a few people in this movie you've heard of, but no one major. So there's uh, Richard Jenkins, who's been in a bunch of things, uh, and Steve Coogan, who's been in a bunch. Oh, of Oh, I love as Steve well. Coogan. But but the thing that made me go wow is that the the guy who plays the Native American, his real name is Lightfoot. Like an act, he's an actual Native American. They didn't just get a guy in oh, shape. Oh, well, thank just God. Get a guy. Oh, well, there wow. Go. Great representation. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. It was also uh, produced by Kathleen Kennedy. No. Well, she pro she produced everything back in the day. Yeah. She produced yeah. everything. Like, she, her the, name is on the Kennedy every... Marshall <laughs> Company who produced it. Oh, I remember the kid well, being a terrible actor. There you go. Uh, I also, like, in the pantheon of 90s Toys to Life cartoon uh, movies, Small soldiers. Rex. <laughs> Dan, Dan, that your movie. hair kind of looks like that kid's hair. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no, but <laughs> Dan still looks like Tom. Tom, stay away from my cupboard, all right? <laughs> oh. If you want to see what Dan's hair looks like, patreon.com forward slash on right podcast free for the month of December. Yes. Thanks yes, for that. Is. Go check it out. <laughs> little... That uh, was and for the month of January. Off. For the month of December and for January. Oh, the, double, uh, double booking. Double yeah. dicking. Well, we've got to celebrate season three. You know? Oh yeah, right, give, Tom, it's like we want, Tom. We want twenty one twenty one to start out good. For Tom, we're not gonna right. harp, we're not gonna harp on this for a long time. But do you think mm -hmm. that we, as the Unranked Podcast, have the longest seasons 
of any other shows <laughs> out there. I mean, if anyone wants to dispute that, they're welcome to come at it. But I think we're safe to claim that. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, not worry about. I'm curious. The only one show I'm worried about is the Adventure Zone. <laughs> yeah, the the original Adventure Zone, I think, is is over away. is well over 100 episodes. Well, it, I think it took over three years, the original Adventure Zone, which is how long our first season was. So. Are there any daily podcasts? Because they would probably kick our ass. Yeah. Yeah, but, they'd ha- but, no, but if they don't use matter. seasons. Yeah, they have yeah. to delineate. They'd have to. They're not retroactively. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Amazing. Amazing. All right, let's get Guinness uh, on the phone. Yeah, get Guinness yeah, on the phone. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Oh we'll my god. And then in ten the years phone. time, they'll be it like costs so much money. I've looked into it. I've attempted to do Guinness <laughs> stuff. It costs so much money. In ten I'm years sure time there'll be a net Netflix will have run out of things to make docs yeah. about that they'll be like the we'll podcast be a question. that try to scam we'll, the Guinness. So we'll be a question on Jeopardy. So oh, this kid, well, that's the dream. I can die happy then. This kid I worked with, he was an intern like last year where I worked, mm-hmm. and uh, he he set the Guinness record for pizza box folding during the like during May because he because lo- oh, I guess he he was working at a pizza place during the pandemic, so he nice. actually got Guinness to <laughs> to do it. So his parents that costs a, lot, a of lot of money to do. That's tough. Yeah. Um. They, you have to like pay someone to come and watch. It costs like several thousand bucks, and then it. So um, the other game I haven't been playing it, but I've been watching Therese play it is Bug Snacks, and I did text you guys that this game is getting weird and dark as hell. <laughs> uh, but I didn't want to speak on it completely as the expert since I'm not the expert in it because I'm just watching it. So Therese <laughs> is gonna come on. Oh my god! Amazing. <laughs> Well, because I was about to talk about it, and then I went up when I got got a drink as Tom came on, and I was like, "Hey, wait, mm-hmm. would you come on?" Yeah, and talk I have a little experience with it too, so I can relate to some of it, the earlier stuff at least. This feels really weird. The, the like walk on entrance thing. Also, this is like <laughs> nice. also oh, the way that you're wearing it. This is how it goes. The way you're wearing headphones is, is like the on the airplane. Well. Like we have to watch one screen. Yeah, we're watching a movie. Yeah. We're watching a movie on the airplane. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I so, I just caught mm-hmm. the pizza moth. So I, I just went oh, you through, got it? yeah. Oh, that that's the big boy, huge... right? That's the. Oh well, yeah. yeah, no, that's not for everybody. But um, <laughs> I'm, you know, at this point, I'm a true pro. So mm. I, I caught the pizza. I flung pizza rolls at it until it crashed into the ground, and I just <laughs> scooped that sucker up. So, not a big deal. But is that the end of the deal. game? Um, no, I think actually right now, technically I can end it, but I don't want to end it until I get all of the bug snacks. So I'm mm-hmm. still, so about to find I think her there's like six or, or seven I'm still working on. Have you found out where she, where she is yet? Or like you're, you just have to like literally go find her. I have a strong idea. Oh, okay. Um, I I'm feeling pretty good talking. about the mystery. Oh, so a little you, mystery. You don't know what what is the premise is? of the game? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Uh, someone's so you, missing, right? The mayor. Of bug Tom, snack, I didn't ask huh? you. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Tom, Tom, so you experts. are a journalist that comes into uh, the Bug Snacks world, and you basically mm-hmm. have to solve a bunch of side quests until you eventually find the missing, uh, the missing person, and you bring everybody back to Bug Snacks. Yeah. The weird thing is, and I'm not even totally sure is like they got hung up on this idea of like you are what you eat, so they all eat the Bug Snacks, right. but. As you eat them, you have to choose which them. body parts become the snacks. Oh. Yep. So now everything <laughs> looks horrifying. <laughs> and I love the game, but I hate the way everybody looks. So I'm borderline creeped out. Yeah, I only made it a few, I only made it like really early Six into the game ten. before I realized Perfect. I can't play it because it gives me like motion sickness. Yeah, yeah Teresa, sure. what's your what's your rating <laughs> of the game out of ten? Um to? Probably like a seven. Oh wow! Yeah. No, game I, of the year. I think it's actually pretty fun to play. <laughs> well, let me ask and you this: and it's a short game, so you can like. I, I think it's interesting enough for you to continue and get to the end. So right. it's it's fun. It's yeah. just weird. But but, but yeah. let me ask you this: it's if trippy. I ask you to rate something on a scale from one to ten, like, is there really anything that gets a two through five, or are those numbers kind of just like eh? a two through five? Like, is everything really either a one th- or like like a six, seven, eight? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Christian, you, you, I feel like you know which games well, I picked. Well, this isn't like about a, what I think. Yeah, this isn't about <laughs> what you think. It's your show. No, no, no it's about you what you, he asked you. He didn't say I'm asking Christian you what, like, if, like, your regular scale of one, like, whenever I rate something from a scale to one to ten, two through five is yeah. just, like, nothing. Like, I don't even consider so anything. So you're using the scale wrong. 
I think I am. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. That is using, using the scale, scale wrong. Um, but I do think if anything registers a two through five, I don't care enough about investing to continue to figure out if it should stay there. So right. I, I quickly pass over it too. Right. So, so I, really I, it's, it's not one. memorable, I guess. It's a one. It goes down <laughs> to a one. <laughs> no, it's still at seven. I no, no, say no, no, it's no, a no. seven. I mean, anything from two to five basically is a one. Oh, is a one. Let me, eh, I could kind of see me, that. Tuna, let me give you our official list of what everything is translates to so a 10 is who's exceptional our? who's ours this our? is this is digital trends official go. one right, through ten. Oh, wow i know big, ten, big time here 10 10 is exceptional yeah F- nine amazing uh-huh. eight great okay because mm. it rhymes seven very good that makes sense <laughs> six good mm. five adequate mm. four disappointing mm-hmm Three is poor. Um, two is very poor, and one is garbage. <laughs> See, you're, not really garbage. Diff- you're not doing it for me there. Between disappointing, also there's no poor, zero. What's zero? Poor. Right, zero. It has to be a zero. No, it's a scale of one to ten. Yeah. One to ten. Yeah. So it's really... Zero. The game doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Zero is incomplete. Yeah. Like Halo. So there's right now. there's two things about bug snacks I want to bring up. <laughs> While Teresa's here, the mm. first off okay. is a uh, mild spoiler warning oh, for God. people. There's a mild spoiler warning, okay. but there's a character in this game mm-hmm. that is definitely sort of like the has science gone too far, mm-hmm. who is um, digging up what are they called? Um, grumpuses. Yeah. The the characters are called grumpuses. Mm-hmm. And whenever they eat something, a part of their body turns into food that of that bug snack. And she's like, "At what point do you become more bug snack than Grumpus?" Mm. It's a powerful question. And it's... so, she eats enough food to become all food. Yes, but then it's unclear. She's also testing on other Grumpuses. You see that she has skeletons, like kind of around her tent. There's a lot of like eyebrows raised, but people are like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'll just stay away from you." Is but that kind of it, like the ship? It's definitely some questionable of, behavior. Is that kind of like the ship of Theseus? It's like at what point is it no longer the ship? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. it's yeah, a really philosophical a question. It is, it is a little bit of that. It is. Yeah. And then the other thing is, and this was for you. So you've been using, and I just brought this up with Dan, the tool tips in the PlayStation because the game has, mm. and this is something I've thought about before, but. There's a lot of like video game logic in games, which isn't necessarily logic logic. It's like you would know to think to do this if you played enough video games. But if you don't play enough video games, you might get to an area and you're like, well, I don't know what to do now. So I know you've used the tool tips thing, but um, what like I'm just curious if you could talk about that part of it, because you got up to like the snowy ice area and when you were in the boss fight and... Um, the like puzzle for the pizza moth, which I didn't see how you accomplished that because I guess you just did it. But like, it was unclear. I think if you don't play video games, how or what like looking in the environment, what the clues are, because there's like a lot of like there happens to be a statue somewhere, and if you know to play video games, you're gonna try to move the statue, or right. you're gonna try to mm-hmm. shoot the statue, or you're gonna try to grab or push or something. But otherwise, to anyone else, it just looks like a part of the environment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I was also afraid, like, if I screw it up, I don't want to, like, screw the level or this is my only chance to get this thing. So sometimes Mm. I would would double check. But um, there's so many of these damn bug snacks, too. And I don't like eventually some of them. I'm like, I just want to get the burrito. Like, <laughs> what a just statement. give me the damn burrito. Like, I just, I just cut to the chase, the guys. Burrito. Like, I don't want to figure this out. Yeah. So there's a there's a couple of times that I'm like, I'll take the shortcut because I, like, I want to move on here. I don't want the loaded baked right. potato charging at me while I'm trying to get my burrito. I just want to get through this. Do you think I it's mean, weird I'm, how yeah. many <laughs> of the foods aren't just fruit and they're just like fully cooked food slash bugs? No. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of the aggressive ones are the meat eating, um, the meat uh, eating snacks, which which you find eventually, and then a lot of the well, fruit like are kind of like the cute cuddly guys. Um. Yeah, there's like uh, the spare ribs. Yeah, the spare ribs, <laughs> which are kind of gross. Um, and then it's even more gross when they become the spare rib because then they just have this like bony, weird claw that of meat 
hanging mm. at you. Um, so not a huge fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to transform into a lot of like kiwis and like, there you go, something nice. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like cuddly bug snack. That's fucking hilarious. The weirdest thing. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say? No. Do you want to tell him to suck it? True surprise. Walking in here. No, I do not. (laughs) 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 All right. Thank you. Um, The the last thing I wanted to say about it was she was playing the other night, and I'm like, I feel like you must be pretty much at the end of this game. And then she gets back, she like delivers the mission, and the prompt comes up, and they're basically like, Hey, once you start this mission, you can't go back to the rest of the game, and the game is gonna end. Like you can't go back to the rest of the game. So, like, I guess when you finish the game, whatever's going to happen in the story, I think some done. crazy shit is about to go down. Oh, and you know if it what? does... That would make sense. No, because... So, like, the whole... The plot of the game is basically based around you showed up on this island to meet with this scientist who is in charge of the island, and the scientist has right. gone missing. So, yes. I guess once you find the scientist, there's no reason for all the weirdness to keep happening, because she'd have a right. hold on everything. I get... But, but but also, everyone but, like, one Grumpus who doesn't eat bug snacks, he just collects them, is almost, like, a 100% hideous monster at this point. Um, oh, fuck, that's right. There was this song called Put Your Balls in Me that one of the characters <laughs> sings. What is I totally forgot further? about that. I... I, I yeah, uh, yes. Is there's one? There's this tall lady who oh, sings. Oh, I know who that songs. is. Yeah, I got she's to like that a diva, one. And she yeah. literally says the words, "I want you in my mouth. Put your balls in me." I did get to that I saved, one. I I shared. She's the Mr. Song, Bucket. I saved the song Amazing. with she's the, Mr. the PlayStation. She is. It's real fucked up. <laughs> it's crazy. So Mr. like, Bucket. because that disclaimer <laughs> came up, she's finishing all the side stuff. But I think maybe Teresa and I'll have to record some kind of a bonus on this fucked up game when we're done with it, just because it'll be all spoilers for what happens. I'm pretty sure the end of this is going to be really twisted based on like how kind of dark it has gotten towards the end of the game. Yeah. I mean, speaking Uh, of the like, Oh, you have to, this is the last mission. So make sure you're ready kind of thing. Uh, There are games like for example, Miles Morales before you head into the final mission, it gives you that warning as well. Cause I think it's like, if you want to have a certain amount of upgrade, if there's an upgrade you want for the final battle, like get it now. So it would be weird for a game like that where it's like about collecting and things to not allow you to play it after the right. boss. But I- I'm eventually going to get around to fucking, fucking playing this game. My concern is all these grumpuses <laughs> are going to get eaten or go full bug snack. And then you won't be able to like they all hand out the different missions to you. So like if story wise, they're wiped out. Which mm. is where I think this shit's going. <laughs> mm. I think Snack Tooth Island is about to get fucking wild at the end of this game. <laughs> no. Look forward to the follow-up review. Which by, by the way, someone apparently, because we talked about speedruns earlier, someone apparently speedran this game in about 15 minutes. What? Which once what? I beat it, I'm going to watch that video. Wait, yeah, I'm not going to watch it until I... I'm sure that it's a glitch, right? Like, I'm sure once you beat it, you might know where you have to go to do whatever it is. So Maybe. there might be right. a way to just accomplish a couple missions and go right to the end. Oh, mm-hmm. um, Maybe. But, yeah, I saw I saw that pop up the other day. It was like, Bugs and Axe beaten in 15 minutes. I was like, fuck. Because like, I'm pretty sure the tutorial <laughs> took me, like, 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> so, like... Maybe you can skip through the tutorial yep. to the end. Maybe they beat it in the tutorial. <laughs> maybe they thought they beat the game, but all they beat was the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That would be amazing. Uh, but that's it for me. Tom, you want to fill us in before we hit the news? Yeah, uh, so I played a couple of things. Uh, funnily enough, uh, you guys are going to hate me for this, and I hate myself for it. I have played quite a bit of Fortnite this past week. Oh, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I got uh, I, I used some V-Bucks to get the Mandalorian Battle Pass. And um, I, I just like won my first couple of solo matches. And I was like, oh, I'm winning. This feels great. And then uh, played with uh, our old co-worker, Connor, for a couple of, couple of matches as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, Alex, you worked with him for about a week? Yes. <laughs> and uh yeah i mean you know we both Con- connor when i asked connor if he wanted to play he was like i'm not very good and i don't build and i was like well i don't build either so once we both kind of gave up on the dream of learning to become master builders it was uh much better um you but I, for I, masturbators I, yeah hey. right exactly exactly um which you know always settle for masturbating and um yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I'm probably not going to stick with it. Um, I'm going to maybe try and complete the Mandalorian set because part of the battle pass, like every like 
10 things or so, you get another piece of Beskar armor. Because um, you start off with the basic Mandalorian armor, and then you slowly get bit bit by bit. So we'll see uh, on that front. Uh, Brooke and I have been playing a lot more of um, Sackboy. Been really enjoying that. And to your thing, Chris, about game logic, there are just moments when we're playing where Brooke will want to do something, and I will be like, no, that doesn't... Like, there's a moment where you have to find, like, these baby monkeys, and they're... Mm -hmm there's a scale and or like a tube you have to throw them in and mm -hmm. we're trying to find one and brooks like well maybe it's this way and i'm like no that doesn't like that's a new area and they would only be spawning here and i just know this inherently because like game design is like this and or there'll be things in the environment because you know some things are breakable and you know i just realized oh there are, i just know from the jump that thing I can break, that thing I can't. This thing yeah. I can break, that thing I can't. So and that's a, that is exactly what I ran into. <laughs> you're a backseat gamer then. I mean, I'm not saying these things. I'm just like watching a like. Beat oh, okay, shit. I thought you're like saying uh, them out loud. Be like, you can't do oh, that. Oh, I was doing some passenger seat gaming for sure. Well, I well one thing that annoys me is that you know I I you know it's a platforming game and there's like yeah. side shit and hidden shit and I want to get all the things and. <laughs> Brooke will just charge on to the next like main bit, and I'm like, no, there's definitely something over here, and you know, but but we're we're having a, having a real good time with that, um, and yeah, I mean that that's really it for me this week. Um, oh, I played the Avengers DLC with Kate Bishop. Uh, she's a really fun character to play as, but the game is still buggy and broken and mundane so it's it's a shame because i i think a lot of people were hoping <laughs> what oh you laugh at that nothing you, you, just, about you it. just had a little it's a video podcast right i'm from the video yeah masturbating um mm -hmm. anyway so uh yeah kate bishop um she she's she's a fun character um got a lot of cool abilities her like teleporting abilities are dope but it's definitely not enough to get me to come back every day to, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's really distracting trying to, like, formulate my thoughts. I'm watching YouTube fucking chuckleheads <laughs> telepathically. Uh, well, here's the thing, linking. Tom. Don't, don't, this is, this, this episode is being recorded on my laptop, which means it's being recorded in the cloud. So you, it's only going to be the single screen video mm. experience. So people aren't going to even know that. What? Okay. You're just going to have to try and ignore it. What? Uh, I told what? you this at the beginning, Alex. Remember, I but said I didn't I'm recording realize, this. I, didn't so realize, I, didn't, only I don't know why that didn't, I, I know you said that, <laughs> but for whatever reason, that didn't. Like register in it was my part mind of why is, I said it was so that no one's doing anything but for wait, the video. If we made noise, <laughs> if we made noise, wouldn't it then for a second flash to us? Only if face? it supersedes the amount of to noise Tom was. He stayed highlighted. That All right, no one loud faces. Yeah. God damn! It. <laughs> I need to be like loud and consistent. I think so. So oh. Tom, people might just hear the noise and then see you and maybe being like, "What confused, the fuck is going knowing. on?" <laughs> it'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great for everyone. Um, and oh, then, what a yeah, so. So uh, I, it's not enough to bring me back like in a routine basis. I'll check in with this game every time they drop a new character, but the, the, they, there are still things in that game that I'm rolling my eyes at. Like, why haven't you fixed this? Uh, anyway, and then um, I'll have my cyberpunk opinions for, for next week. I've only played a couple of hours on Xbox. Um, after playing all of these amazing next-gen games in 4K60, it's really jarring to play a game in, like, 900p because it's the old-gen mm. version. Mm. Um, next-gen versions of this game aren't out yet. Uh, won't be out till next year. So what did you think of the character creation? I saw, I mean, I saw a little character creation. Were you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I made, um, I made the uh, Lilu from The Fifth Element on my Xbox. Oh, so you got the haircut and stuff. So you, you got a full nudie screen for a little bit. Huh? Oh, I got a I got a full nudie screen for a bit, yeah. And then I made a guy on my um, uh, on my PC, and I'm glad that penis one is uncircumcised, and circumcised penises have been relegated to penis two. Uh, <laughs> penis. Well, I guess we just learned something about Tom. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm 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 uncut. <laughs> You're uncut, <laughs> Alex. Yeah. Alex, uh, Alex. yeah. I'm gonna be quiet so we can get Alex's expression here. <laughs> Say, wow. make a noise too. No, okay. There you go. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I like how his response was. Wow. I mean, I'm wow. I'm English. We don't do it there. Well, all right. 
It's a very kind of uniquely American thing. Tuna, tuna is a half and half. So the Jewish race at large outside <laughs> of America. Okay, um, are you done? Or because I, I just remember. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. To, I wanted good. to do a Netflix recommendation. Oh, okay. And then I have a game thing I forgot to talk about. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, go, go for it. Netflix, so, right. uh, Netflix recommendation. We are the champions. A couple episodes of obscure competitions. Oh, yeah. That looked great. That was good. Awesome. Uh, and then the other recommendation I have is the holiday movies that made us. So you've got Elf and Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh. And, nice. Um, movies that made us. And that is Die Hard, Ghostbusters, Dirty Dancing, and Home Alone. Yeah, yeah, I watched were, those, I watched those a while good. ago, the movies one. And I saw the Christmas yeah. ones this week, too. It's good. And there you go. It's interesting That's stuff. Yes. Um, the only other thing I was going to add really quick was I, for, I almost forgot. John Murphy, and I only remember because you brought up Fortnite, and this is like the game. Basically, John Murphy just plays Fortnite, Animal Crossing, and sometimes Smash. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> he came over this weekend, um, and we played some Smash Brothers local on my roof. Socially distant. And then we also played some Perfect Dark. God, man, I love being able to play that original Perfect Dark on the Xbox. I might have to... Alex and I started playing through it on co-op. I I need to play through it on single player so that I can unlock everything. Because that's like the one annoying thing is like, I just wanted to pull it up and play multiplayer (laughs) battle. But I couldn't do it because it didn't have any of the like... I mean, we did, but it didn't have a lot of the really awesome weapons i didn't have the far sight which you could like see through the walls and all the other crazy stuff that's in it the end bomb the laser but it is amazing playing it even now on the newer console where now it's running in 4k at 60 frames a second you know um it may or may not have hdr now like <laughs> i don't even know you know with what the xbox is doing to it but it looked amazing it ran incredible like this was a game when you used to play it with bots on if an explosion went off it would dip down into like sometimes single frames or the tens uh right. and now we're you know, playing tons of characters and 60 solid the whole time. They really need to bring back some kind of first person shooter that is reminiscent of old school shooters. Like they don't, doesn't need to be on the same scale, Mm -hmm. but the smaller levels are really fun. Yeah. I I miss, And I really miss the like just fun weapons that have crazy, somewhat unbalanced, like secondary slots, like the laptop (laughs) gun, which worked as a sentry explosive proximity weapons, explosive proximity grenades. Yeah. Um, Like there's the grenade, the secondary mode, you throw it and it bounces around like a pinball until it gets close enough, someone to explode. And it just won't blow up until it will basically kill someone. Right. And, when you're disarmed in this game, if you don't have a gun, you could punch people, which will, like, daze them. Right. And then, they, like, their screen is, like, blurry while they're trying to run. Or you can disarm them. There's a secondary punch where you just run up to someone, you hit them, and they lose their gun. You have their gun now. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that shit is cool. Yeah. I wish, I wish that kind of stuff was still happening. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. It's cool as fuck. I'm with you. Um, so. I, I do have one more thing that I played, uh, Call of the Sea, which is a new Game Pass title. Uh, optimized for Series X, so it looks gorgeous. Um, I think, honestly, all of you would like it for different reasons. Uh, there's a lot of Lost in there. There's literally yeah. a hatch you have to blow open. Uh, I plan on playing it through <laughs> this whole weekend. I'm just because it's. I looked it up. It's about it's five quick, hours, yeah. so I plan on just sitting and playing through the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think I got like halfway through it based on so. where things were headed in one stream. Um, but there's a little bit of Lovecraft horror in there. There's a little oh, yeah. bit of um, wit, uh, the witness with the puzzle design and everything. Nice. So um, I, if you're looking for a fun indie game, it's on Game Pass. And if you're looking for something that is designed to run on the Series X and take advantage of all of that, there's a little something for you. Um, and I'm curious. I, I'm. I look forward to hearing what you have to, what you think about it when you get hands on with it, Chris. And I think awesome. Tuna, I think Tuna should give it a go. And it is only five hours, as you said. Call of the sea. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it this week and then we'll talk about it next week, I guess. Fantastic. Uh news time. News. <laughs> news. Did, did you play <laughs> the music? <laughs> yeah, you guys couldn't hear it? No. Nope. <laughs> oh well. Uh time for the news. <laughs> Sorry, you couldn't hear it. Can't do anything about that at this point. Um Game Awards are tomorrow, which is why we were recording a day early this week. Kind of excited for that. I'll be doing a stream with Tom, uh, Matt, and Emily, I believe, Mm -hmm. ahead of the Game Awards. We'll be doing some predictions and then just watching them and hanging out. Um, That'll be fun. I'm excited for that. It'll be a good time. 
It will unfortunately have already happened by the time people hear this, but it was great. You guys should totally watch Hopefully. it tomorrow. It's going to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, announcements of trailers and stuff. Yeah, so. there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. If you're listening to this right yeah. now, sorry, it's already it. too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the biggest news this week has to be Halo. So Halo has been confirmed. The launch window is going to be next fall, which is something we kept all starting to say, being like, this isn't coming out for like a year, is it? This isn't even going to be next break. This is going to be a year from now. Turns out that's right. It, they did a lengthy blog post. It is not just like, hey, it's going to be a year and we're trying to like fix some stuff. They were very specifically like, we're doing this with the lighting, we're doing this with the texture, we're doing this with the models. All of this stuff that wasn't in there was already being worked on. It was like an early build. We kind of wish that wasn't what you guys saw, but it was all we had to show at the time. Uh, a lot of the criticisms that people had made, it's like they like went through all of those and are fixing, ev like they're, they're doing every single thing that basically people had brought up. Like facial animations, the designs of some of the enemies, like the, um, you know, Craig the Brute sort of like they were like yeah the, the facial animations like i wasn't even like operating in that demo um and they were like also stuff like hair on the brutes that is going to be like one of the things that's added later like we're still working on it so it's not even rendered in the video so it's like the clean shaven <laughs> craig the brute um but i think it's funny they they did like specifically say they're going to fix all of those things and they're still working on them all they did show some screens of some of the weapons and of like an actual multiplayer map where two Spartans are, and the textures look awesome. The textures and design and everything looks really good and not like what was in the original trailer. Mm. Um, so, whatever. Like, I want to play a good Halo game, and I probably don't want to deal with getting a good Halo game that's not complete and just waiting for it to come to get patched in. So, it's probably the better option. Um, it better be complete when it gets here next year. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? If it gets here next year and it's like, oh, but don't worry, we'll patch it up in the year to come. It's like, fuck you. What, are you, what were you doing? That's that's the thing. I but mean, the, I, the, I think th I think that they pushed it out so far. I mean, we talked about this. I think we and Chris did about how they, I think they pushed it out this far so that it wasn't like, all right, spring and it's not ready and have to push it again. Like they uh, don't want to have to push out that far. It's hard to suck back in anyway. Yeah, it's very true. But the, the thing that bothers me about it now is now it's going to be a year after the console launches. It's like they're really making this a fucking cross-platform game. They're really going to hold back the look of this game so that it can work on the original fucking Xbox. That's so dumb. Like, not that many people even have it. Fuck them. Wait, like the, the original <laughs> Xbox or the Xbox One? Uh, the original Xbox One. Okay, because, like, the original Xbox, it will not work on. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it just, I think it kind of blows and I get it. Like you want us to be able to support those people. A lot of people aren't going to be able to buy the new console, but at the same time, like they're going to have, like this game is meant to last a long time. So it's like it, making this the next gen game will make it last a lot longer. I think instead of having to support that old console for years, it seems crazy. And like, especially with it said, being, Hey, a we're going to make an Xbox like, streaming app for tvs you'll be able to stream games just like through an app on your tv you won't even need a console like in the next 12 months so it's like i don't know man just this game should be for the the new console only they're holding it back i'm a little yeah. annoyed about that yeah fuck them <laughs> fuck, fuck them no if you got an fuck you if you got an original xbox one you fucking suck <laughs> I mean, I have one, but I've I've improved upon my collection. And no, now I have, no, Dan, Dan now I have has a Series X. <laughs> Dan has come. Dan has seen the light. Yeah, I mean, I think that I was very impressed by the, uh, all those screens that that we did see. I mean, obviously, it's not moving images, so it's it's a lot easier to make it look good. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I think also, you know, I think that it feels right, like a Halo coming out like in the fall, like around these other big blockbusters instead of like in the spring so i'm excited for it and i loved i loved that the article went so in depth like they literally called out craig they were like we yeah. thought the craig memes were hilarious but we understand that that means that the game fucking <laughs> after looks a like week garbage. of like probably weeping yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean good for them and i mean no one wants i don't think anyone wants this game to 
suck. So <laughs> let's just hope that it's great. I don't think anyone wants it for it to suck either, Thomas. No. No, no, no. Um, yeah. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned your mm-hmm. ranking the ranking scale earlier. What mm. would suck qualify as? What's the first suck? Is it disappointed? Or is it below <laughs> yeah. disappointed? I think four and below is like the, the start of the sucking. Ugh. Okay. Anything but I just want, six and below for I'm me. I'm trying sucks. to just get a scale together where we know what's going on with all of our adjectives. Mm. <laughs> I think we should all have an adjective off. Green. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to really spend more than 30 seconds on this, but I, I would feel dumb not bringing it up. But, man, CD Projekt Red has made a hell of a time making this game popular, like, for edgelords. For what? Uh, with their marketing. For edgelords. People that want to be edgy. I think they're the people who really are good at edging. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is where the term stems from, like, legitimately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, look, it's a very problematic game for so many fucking reasons. And, yeah, um, but wait, 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 sorry. So the thing I was going to say is mm. they already did that. So they've already caused enough trouble for themselves, but then some asshole, there's apparently a scene in the game where you put a visor over your head and they designed the animation for what happens when this visor goes over your head. They took the system that is meant to essentially cause an epileptic seizure there's like a series of light flashes in a pattern that is meant to cause an epileptic seizure. I don't know if it's for testing for epilepsy, um, but they recreated it in the game. This is sort of like the animation that happens when you put this visor on. Meaning, if you're playing the game and you're someone who is susceptible to epileptic seizures, not only do you have the normal concerns that games could do that, but this is an animation in the game simulating a pattern of lights made to cause seizures in people. How that gets past, like, the designer coming up with it, thinking that it's a clever idea, and then all the testing and everything else. Like, how, what, what are you doing? Well, I know in the Cyberpunk <laughs> game, they, they, do, they do warn you at the start that, like, this game can cause seizures. Sure, this game can cause seizures. It's Almost different. Every, like, so it's many video different games than has testing that. it. <laughs> this, is, this is different than this game has a scene in it that is simulating something designed to cause you seizures. Which means if you don't you know? have epilepsy, you can test it using this game. Sure. There it, you go. It's, it's fucking stupid. It's really dumb. Like, that's just, it's like, why, why are you doing this? Uh, for, fortunately, the, the, day, the day one patch has brought in a, um, an amendment, I guess, to the seizure warning being, like, explicitly saying, like, there's a moment in this game or... You know, I don't. I don't know what was in there and what wasn't beforehand. Um, but yeah, that was really fucking messed up, and I cannot believe that it made it into the game after everything that they've, all the delays and all the, but like fucking no one on the team thought about this. Like what? Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, it's going to be very interesting the kind of uh, reaction that this game gets over the next few weeks and months. Very curious to see where this where this all plays out. Um, People very disappointed right now, it seems. I mean, literally, I was late to this uh, podcast because trying to install the new drivers for my game and the game kept crashing. And then I restarted my computer. And my computer was just like not working. Like, there's that. It looks like garbage on the consoles. <laughs> like, it's, we'll see. We'll see where it it's all almost ends like up. they should have delayed it again. It's almost like, yeah, it's it should have, like come, it out should not twen- have come out in 2077, 2077, like it was yeah. intended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they should have stuck to that original date. Or right at least then. 2076, you know, they, they do that year thing where it's the next year when they come out with the game. Right, like the election, how we elect the next president in Oh, no, I'm year, saying like, like Madden 21 came out this year. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, any other news, Tom? Um, Oscar Isaac is Solid Snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. You know, it, it does reek of like some a producer saw a Boss Logic poster. I was like, oh. Yeah, Oscar Isaac. We should get him. It just, it's well, just... He, was, he was in an interview like a year ago. It was in 2019. And they were like, if you could play any character from something. And he was like, Solid Snake. 
He literally said this yeah. in an interview like a year ago. It, it's just <laughs> so. It, it's so funny because all of these fan castings just end up being true. Like Ahsoka Tano is played by Rosario Dawson, who was fan cast forever. Haley Steinfeld is playing Kate Bishop in the Hawkeye TV show, who was everyone's top choice for forever. We've got uh, Oscar Isaac as Snake, and I just we got to get my my X Men one going. Lance Reddick for Professor X. It'd right, so Let's start fucking ahead. good. I, I, if he you hit him up on Twitter awesome. about that, he definitely. Uh, I did. He liked it. He liked oh, the tweet. He was. <laughs> we got to get that going. It'd be great. What's Dan? He'd what's be a what's, what's going Professor through Dan's X. mind right now? Who's he thinking of casting? No, it's terrible. It's not terrible. It's word association, and it. I'm not gonna say it because it's bad. It's not bad. Okay. It's okay. just literally word association that's obvious, and I think anyone can figure it out. But I don't want to be in trouble for saying it. I have no idea where he's going, so you can just right, tell then. me later. I guess. Uh, I'll, tell you guys after. I'll tell you guys after, and uh, you'll, you'll judge if it's worth it or not. <laughs> uh huh. All right, Tom. Uh, anything else? Or no, nah, no. Nah, let's move on. Let's move on. Move it, baby. Great. Sound like a frog. We love hearing from you guys. You can send us an email to email at onrankpodcast.com or you can go to the link in our show notes. It has a link to our Discord channel where you can interact with other members of the community, and you can ask us questions in the channel that says questions for the pod. We're not doing a fortune. Uh, I'm just checking. Oh my gosh. If you're ready for me to hear the music, just let me know when it's done. Okay. Fortune time. So cookie I, me, Dan. I have a tiny little fortune cookie today. I don't cookie know why it's so small, Dan. but it is. <laughs> I don't care. I'm moving on with the fortune cookie. All right, let's break this guy open. Make a mess. All right, here we go. Is it a fortune today? <laughs> this is not a fortune. Uh, it's just, I guess, life advice. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Okay. Well, um, that's great. I'm very happy about that. I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> and... Um... <laughs> Right, anyway. We'll do the exact yeah. opposite of yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, the numbers. Uh, <laughs> 4, like the... 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. No, none of those. Uh, 9, mm. 10, 25, 48, 51, 52. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good luck out there. Someone wrote six. I think someone wrote like. Someone 69, wrote 69, 69, 69, 69, 69, 69, 69, 69. Yeah. I saw that. Pretty good. I wanted to tell them that wasn't a real guess, but I think I think they knew that. Mm. It might have been Slater. I want to say it was Slater. AC. No. Well, this one didn't go out with the uh, <laughs> all compound. No. Mm. <laughs> nah. All right. Um. So we're back at email at onrackpodcast.com. Sorry that I was out of order before. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we've got. All right. This was from uh, Wolf's Lore. What are the favorite tutorials that you guys have done? My personal favorite is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon's tutorial plays out like a parody of a normal tutorial. Oh, so the tutorial part of a level. What is the best one? That's a tough one. That he asked me this tough. when he was when he was coming up with this question. He asked me this, I think, on my stream. And I, like I couldn't come up with a good tutorial. answer. Titanfall tutorial is a great one. Two? Yeah, two. Titanfall yeah. 2's tutorial. Hmm. What happens in that? You go through like a little trials thing. Hmm. And, like you race. Oh, like a... yeah, that trials run. That was the original like uh, speed run. Yeah. <laughs> for, for Astrobot was like people trying to get an amazing time in, in, that tr in that testing. That was good. You know, tutorial I think is iconic but not fun is the Pokemon, like, you go, you basically go through the game, you've done a battle, and then you go to leave, and they're like, oh, hey, let me show you how to catch a Pokemon. <laughs> and then the professor shows up and stops you in the grass, and they just show you how to, like, open and throw a Pokeball. 
I like that one. I think it's charming, even though it's like annoying. So I'm like, I've done this. But they didn't teach so you the times. important parts, like hold B and the down directional button at the same time to keep it in. <laughs> yeah. Or like Halos. <laughs> Halos is like, look up, look down. That's what I came yep. up with. I said Halo because I couldn't think of any work. tutorials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, it's a sneaky hard question. I think Portal had a really good tutorial. Mm. Um, it's the majority of the game, though, because you're yeah, <laughs> like an hour and a half say. in. It's like halfway yeah. through. But I, I liked how the game introduced new mechanics um, in that. Uh, so I, I would put Portal up there, but it's basically just a, it's basically just yeah. a tutorial for Portal 2. <laughs> so <laughs> what inspired the question in the first place? Because well, mm -hmm. uh, Wolf Sword had been playing Persona 5. And he oh, said God, he was in okay. the ninth hour of the tutorial. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That game doesn't fucking stop tutorial. You mean it doesn't fucking start? <laughs> yeah, it, it literally does. Like, it is insane how many new mechanics you'll learn. I hate that about games sometimes when I'm, like, in the 20th hour or something and a new mechanic pops up. I'm like, why the fuck are you introducing this to me now? Anyway, yeah. Fuck Persona I couldn't think of any others. Uh, that's tough. If you, if you listeners have any, let us know what your favorite ones were. If there were any that we didn't mention, um, none come to mind. Cause usually when I get a tutorial, I'm like, I know how to do all this. Can we can just, can you give me a button? Just let me hit the skip button. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's go. Um, Zerniak has a follow up to Wolf Slayer question, which is what game have you played that either didn't have a tutorial, but desperately needed one, or had an awful tutorial. Escape from Tarkov would be mm -hmm. mine, since I had no tutorial, and is extremely complex. It took me about 40 hours of playing before I left halfway competent. I think Minecraft, uh, maybe there is now. I believe there, I think they have like some level now of like an adventure mode where there is like, it walks you through certain things, but I was they don't really confused. teach you how to craft stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely when that game first came out, it was so obtuse. To try and yeah learn learn what, what did you, you just call me learn. yeah no, just, sorry it's a, <laughs> I mean they that was they wanted that to be there you go <laughs> like I guess they wanted that to be part of the game um but I don't know how you were supposed to expect people to know like well if you take wood and you line it up in the shape of a stick you can like make a like this and you, with you put a stone at the bottom and I've got like a shovel like I don't know how uh, the expectation of people to know what to do or that you even can do that. Uh, would it come from? I'll you tell know? you what tutorial I think that we should all have that we didn't get. Um, in life, managing finances, uh, stock mm. market uh, stuff, and uh, life lessons. Mm. I took stock market stuff 101, actually. In high school? In college, yeah. No, was, no, was it actually called school. stock market stuff? I'm just, I, was just, I was just making a joke. Oh, okay. about it. Oh, you're like, making no. a joke. Tom, you know who for those? Mm. In high Tom, school, we did play a stock market joke making game. 101. Yeah, <laughs> I, I failed out of that one. I failed out of that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I would agree. I mean, it was so funny. We like we, you know, I went to when I went to college. It was that thing of we had to take a math class. Like the art students, you have to take you have to take one math class your entire time, and then they, you can fuck off. And they give you like, all right, this is how you balance the checkbook. This is this is how you like invest in things. And I was like. This is the best math. This is the most useful math I've learned my fucking entire life. Fuck the Pythagorean theorem. Because of fuck. No one needs to know that. Well, some people need to know that. Well, they it's can rare, learn though. it, Dan. Although I guess I know it by heart now. So, anyway. What is it? Uh, a something. And then a bunch <laughs> of shit. Uh, That's correct, technically. It, it is correct. <laughs> yeah, it is correct. It is correct. <laughs> Um, and Charsky18 says unfortunately I don't get to game as much as I would like to to work often I find myself playing a game I enjoy but then a new game comes out that piques my interest mm. how do you handle finishing games or starting a new one currently playing God of War but I'm excited for Cyberpunk and I don't think I will finish God of War by next week um, I mean I have said recently that I realized I can't play I can play multiple games at once but I can't play multiple narrative games I can't, I can't, it's like I can kind of juggle two games. So it's like until I was done with Astro, I wasn't going to start doing uh, Sackboy. And until I'm done with Miles, I'm not going to go back to Assassin's Creed. Because when I tried to do both, I was making really no progress On either. in either. Right. Yeah, and then 
I it, it's just like you know yeah no I I agree with you completely I can't play like Assassin's I wouldn't be able to play Assassin's Creed and God of War at the same time I wouldn't be able to nope. play God of War and The Last of Us at the same time um, what I can do is I can play uh, like Assassin's Creed and Super Mario Sunshine or Super Mario mm-hmm. Galaxy at the same time or Baba is You or Pikmin like I can play a Nintendo Fall Guys or Fall Guys yeah like I can play one yeah. of those games even probably Zelda well maybe not but uh, I really can't play like a God of War and a Assassin's Creed at the same time I'll, I'll ha- I have to do one and then I'm usually a completionist so I won't even touch another game until Valhalla is complete there you go I'm so glad I just don't really like unless like it's my favorite game I'm just not going to really give a shit about the trophies or any kind of challenges so that when I'm done with Miles I'll be done with Miles and I'll just go right to Assassin's Creed and then when I'm done with that I'm going to go right to God of War that is the order of games I'm going to be playing upcoming uh, as far as the story ones go Um, because I don't need to get all those items fine I I have decided to subscribe to the go with my gut. Um, obviously, I juggle a ton of games, especially this year more than ever. I feel like with the new consoles coming out, there was like five or six games at a time that I was playing. And I have, I used to beat myself up over like, you should play this, you should play this because you should just get it done with, but I'm not invested in it or I just don't want to play that at the moment. And I end up being like, kind of like why the fuck am i even doing this so i'm the kind of person that's just like what what if if you had to answer something immediately like what do you want to play and you had to answer right there and then that's what you should play and it doesn't matter if it's you know uh two story games like say it was cyberpunk and valhalla like i'm still playing valhalla but i'm about to jump into cyberpunk too like there'll be moments where i don't want to play cyberpunk and i want to play valhalla and i'll go do that or i'll go want to play a fucking game of fortnite like (laughs) you know I almost think, and I'm not going to do it with Cyberpunk because it's just too big of a game, but I do think there's something, like Alex, the games you and I mentioned, they're all like third-person narrative games and adventure games. I almost feel like a first-person shooter, like if there was Halo right now, I could still find time to do Halo and something else. Maybe not necessarily like a full story if it's really long, Mm -hmm. but I think it is partially just like the game type. It's like I could do a shooter in an adventure game or a shooter in a platformer, but I can't do Halo, the way they break it up usually too is kind of easier to kind of just compartmentalize. You can be like, oh, like we haven't Mm. played this level yet. We can jump into that whenever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I don't know. As far as me, I, I don't finish a lot of games. Usually, like, if it's a multiplayer game and I'm playing, like, a campaign with you guys, I'll finish it. But otherwise, I get bored at some point in time and go, oh, I'll come back to this later and start playing something else. And then I never come back to it. Yeah. I've done that enough that now, sometimes, if I just want to finish the game, I'll be like, fuck it. I'm just going to put this on the easiest setting so I can finish this and just blow through it because I'm going to stop playing either way anyway. So I may as... Like, if I care at all about the story at that point, I'm like, I'm just going to be done with it so that I don't just leave it off here in the last 20% and then not Mm -hmm. be done with it. Alex would never just leave a game 80% done. No no way. (laughs) What is the lowest percentage you would leave a game done? Uh, Because at a certain point, it's too far to end. (laughs) Well, like, let's say you hate the game, like, and you're like 4% done with it. You could just walk away. Yeah, I mean, the collectible games are the games that I'm going to 100%. But I'm saying, let's say you hate the game. Like, what's the farthest along you could get before you'd be like, I don't care if I finish this? Too human. <sighs> Damn. Yeah, like, I don't really buy games yeah. anymore that I don't really, really like. So, sorry. It's it's very easy now to find out if you're going to like a game or not before it is really easy you play it. Today, to, for me to find out, yeah. Right. Um, I already have, like, a pretty good track record with Assassin's Creed, so that was an easy buy. God of War, I didn't obviously I didn't buy it right away. Like I bought a PlayStation just to play that game because the internet was going fucking crazy about it. Uh, the Last of Us, because I had a PlayStation, I bought it. Um, you know, like we'll see what happens with Jedi Fallen Order when I get back into that game. But you know, we will. Mm-hmm. Boom. Um, and then I think there was one more. What is the okay Zerniak? What is the funniest movie scene ever created? My personal vote is for the debate scene from Billy Madison. 
like the funniest scene. Fuck. From any TV or movie? He said movie. It says from any movie. Any movie. Any movie ever. Damn, that is... I wish we had teed this up. I, I, um, I've, got, I've got it. I've got okay, mine. Okay, go, go, go for yours. Go ahead. Orange County. Okay. I don't know what this movie is. It I is a... I know what it is. It is a it is a Colin Hanks Jack Black vehicle from the year two thousand and three. Mm. Takes like, yep, takes place okay. in. It takes Orange place County. in Orange County, California. <laughs> it's about Colin Hanks. He's a surfer dude. He lives in Orange County, and he decides he wants to become a writer. And he feels that he needs to leave. He's never going to become a writer if he doesn't go to Stanford. And there's a mistake, and he doesn't get in. And he and it's him like try, trying to get into Stanford. And one of the, the one of the initial ways he attempts to do this is um, his this the the kind of cool girl at school. Her grandparents are on the board at Stanford, so they blackmail her because they have some dirt on her, which is actually really funny. Uh, into having the the grandparents go over to his house to meet him in person, and they go over, and it is a series of. Uh, comedic errors one after the other jack black's looking for his clean urine the mother who's played by catherine catherine o'hara from schitt's creek and home alone yes that's the same woman apparently people on the internet didn't know that uh she plays the mother she's an alcoholic who's married this like old guy who's in a wheelchair for money and he's like rolling around (laughs) it's it's uh, i the first time i ever saw that i just was like could not stop laughing for 20 minutes good one it's a good one whole good the whole movies you guys give it a watch do you do you guys have any others uh anything from wedding i, I think i know one. but go on uh so there's the scene in just friends the ryan reynolds amy smart oh, movie the he, yeah. there he's over so her house funny. like it's christmas and he's just like angry and trying to leave and they basically there's a huge uh I guess Christmas decoration set up outside and Mm -hmm. it single-handedly just gets destroyed during a scene. So like everything Mm -hmm. that could possibly like fall and hit someone does and all sorts of shit. And it's caused by Anna Faris's character, but that's probably the one I'm going with. I was trying, I'd say it's funny. I was thinking about Borat and I was thinking about that movie when this, (laughs) I was the scene from that movie I was thinking about was when he plays hockey and then he ends up, like biting his oh, tongue yeah. in the <laughs> that one's great like in too. the stretcher, and then he gets slides yeah. down the fucking hill. He's a good he's that a good hockey player in the me. movie, but he has these rental skates, so he can't move on them, and so the kids are kicking his ass. So he winds that up for a the, slap shot. And that was the first scene that <laughs> uh, I had ever seen from just uh, just friends. That was the first one I had seen. Oh, uh, the first then, scene of the movie is the first one I saw. And then honestly, the new, I was about to say the naked fight scene in Borat, but honestly, the new Borat movie where <laughs> she has her period at the debutante oh, ball. Oh, that one is you thought that was one funnier? of the funniest things I've I thought, ever seen in my life. I thought the, the cake leading into the doctor's visit was the best of that. It was also very, very, <laughs> I, honestly, I might just rewatch it. I mean, the one, the one so for me, the one, funny. I tried one to give her pleasure and I put baby inside her. <laughs> the one it's for me, so the, funny. The one for me that is the, I am, my jaw has dropped in disbelief, but my internally, I am crying with laughter, but I can't, I'm so transfixed, is when he goes to the synagogue dressed as the Jew. Yeah. (laughs) I was just like, and I know that like they set this up, but like the initial like reaction to seeing that was so visceral for me. Oh man, Barrett. It's so good. Um, Alex, it's possible I might not be here next week, so I'm going to ask this one this week. It's the last one. Psych Mike, how did you learn or find out Santa wasn't real? I found out because my dad would mm. always report Wait, us coming down the stairs on Christmas morning. Sorry, did you not hear me, Dan? Do I need to repeat? I don't. Wait, what do you mean not real? Great. Right. Uh, so it. one time when I went back to watch the tape, there was a night shot of the presents untouched under the tree with a date and timestamp to 12 a.m. on Christmas Day. Mm. Uh, I'll tell you. I know exactly when I stopped believing in Santa and how I found out. Um, I asked mom, why 
didn't Santa bring as many presents to poor kids that he did to me? Oh. So she didn't know what to do. (laughs) So she said the presents from Santa are from me. (laughs) So that's why. Wow. You know, it's... it's, um... That's such a tuna way to, to go about it. That's so fucking funny. It really is. That, that's a hell when, of a... When were you line. radicalized when I found out Santa wasn't real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... Um, I don't remember when I found out Santa was real, but when I found out God was real, I have a very vivid memory of that. I obviously like had my suspicions, right? That there was this well, hold on a second, Tom. You're going Sorry, backwards. Yeah, okay. Are you Thank not you. backwards <laughs> Thank here? You. What is happening? What's going on? What's, what's happening? You right found now? out what? that both Santa and God are real. Would you like to share with the group? No, no, no. When I when I found out God wasn't real. Okay, because you said was. <laughs> for <Sorry>. both. <laughs> yeah, you said was, and I got to tell you, I wasn't sure if Tom suddenly just got really good at improv <laughs> yeah. and was like doing a bit that he's been practicing. Because yeah. I was like, you were convinced. Yeah. But now no, I have another I, question about what he's doing here with this. How he found yeah, out let's, God let's wasn't say. real. But go ahead. Well, so I remember I lied to my dad about something. I don't. I don't remember what the specifics were, but I lied about it. And my dad, for some reason, decided to pull the God card and was like, "You know, I oh, might. Trap I might not be able to know if you're lying, but God, God knows. God knows." I must have been six, and I turned to my dad. I remember, like, I wasn't looking at him because I was lying to his face. But the moment he brought that up, I was like, "This is bullshit." And I turned and I. Fucking locked eyes with him, and I remember this. I locked eyes with him, and I was like, "Do you even believe in God?" And my dad just sat there, <laughs> what mm. felt like an eternity, just looking at me, and went, "No." And like, I'm sorry that I try to use God against you. And I was like, "Yeah, mm. that isn't gonna work." Threaten to take all my toys, yeah. Threaten the Almighty, ain't gonna fly. Hmm. Anyone else feel like this is gonna backfire on Tom? Yeah, a little yeah. different. <laughs> a little different between Santa and God, but right. Sure. Yeah, because Santa Fuck like it. delivers presents. Right. Yeah. Santa does nice things. God delivers plagues. God delivers. Uh, yeah, the fucking locusts. <laughs> I didn't say any. Drown the world. <laughs> uh, I don't know when the time was. I feel like I was very young. Just said two older brothers. I was generally pretty aware of that stuff early on but i do remember like i think i talked about this some point years ago i probably brought this up on the podcast but whether i was like willing to go along with the lie or i ever truly believed it i don't know but like we used to have christmas eve night was our big night because we're italian and they would have it was always at my grandparents house and the whole family would be there between my like brothers and my cousins and they would have um my grandparents neighbor would come over like late at night dressed as Santa Claus, we'd hear like someone make like a big loud bang outside. Like he landed on the roof or whatever. And then he would come in with these big bags, like with the presents and sit down and like hand out our gifts. So when I was like very little, I used to actually think Santa would personally come and deliver (laughs) our presents (laughs) and shit to us. But then like, even for like years and years later, like until like my youngest cousin, like didn't like, you know, still believed in him. I was still very happy to go along with it because it was fun. Like, yeah. I didn't give a shit. Like, I, I went, it's still fun, went along so who with cares? It. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. So, uh, I don't know when. I was probably very young. Probably no later than, like, seven mm-hmm. is what I would guess at that point. I think point. I was seven when I asked my mom that question. Yeah. Well, that, that makes <laughs> that, sense. You, you saying know? that you guys were seven just reminds me of that Trump video. You seen that where he's, talk- he's like, thanking. He's, like, calling kids, like, wishing them, like... <laughs> happy christmas or whatever and he's on the phone with one he's like how old are you seven do you still believe in santa claus because at that age it's marginal <laughs> to a fucking seven year old dude <laughs> damn i haven't seen that oh but it it's so good funny. it's so good man that's oh my psychotic you next um, psycho. dan what, what am i answering i don't remember what the hell we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> when you found out Santa was not real. Oh, uh, when I, when I first got Hanukkah presents and I could talk. 
That's fair. That's fair. Did you have to like walk around and be like, all these people believe in this bullshit? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's right. kind of yeah. Like you just you're like, oh, these guys are just idiots. All right. <laughs> these guys are just idiots. You believe in this fat guy that comes down a small chimney? You're like, but this oil lasted for eight days. So someone made a good point recently about Santa uh, in the way it's portrayed. He never just goes house to house. He always mm. comes out of the chimney and then flies away into the distance. Like he's not like a he, he would he would work as a mailman kind of if it was, if mm. it made sense. He would just go like jump house to house to house to house to house and then leave the neighborhood for another mm. neighborhood. It's kind of inefficient the way he's doing it. Just yeah, I mean, randomly you, you, all over the world. You, uh, he, I think you f- 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 so found some logic, uh, some logical inconsistencies there, Dan. Yeah, yeah, just saying. Quite possible. Guess Santa's not real. I guess not. Oh. I really hope we didn't. Yeah. Re- we're gonna get like multiple messages. I can't believe you guys spoiled Santa for me. I thought Santa was real. My four-year-old mm. listens to this podcast. Then Tom, told, Tom yeah. told me there's no God. Apparently, I don't have a God. Anymore. <laughs> my four-year-old listens to the podcast and it's ruined. <laughs> There's no if you are letting your children listen to your podcast. You're a fucking crazy person. <laughs> that's 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 one cool baby. Yeah, fuck you, fuck yeah. you for <laughs> letting your kid listen to this shit. That kid's gonna right. go to school. Suck it, <laughs> Alex. You made today's game. Do you have a complaint before that? Should I just no, no complaint. Go right what? into the game. Can I complain? All right. No, actually, no. No, the game music's <laughs> going. You <laughs> can't hear it, but it's going. We don't got Alex, time. tell it like it is. Okay, Uh, we are going to play a game called Tuna's House of Games, which are going to be a couple of games that I developed that were completely Uh and totally ripped from British television. So from Taskmaster and from Richard Osman's House of Games, Uh, I just created video game versions of those, and we're going to see how it works. Are you ready to play Thog? Yeah. Great. (laughs) Okay, we need the buzzer thing. Okay. How are you going to do that? Uh, I'm using Brit's iPad and my new iPad, so I have my phone. But you... Okay. You're, you wouldn't you want to see who of us buzzed in? Like, don't you have to I host gonna, it? Huh? My phone is... What's going on? He's saying he's got an extra device. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what's, what's the website? The, uh... Buzzin.live. Alex, you got to create the game. All right, everybody. Calm down. That's what I, That's my point was. It seemed All like you right. wanted someone else to run this game. I was like, no, 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 no. I will do it. Free tier. Oh, my God. Please make your game code Thog. Uh, game code is 403090. <laughs> so if anyone wants to join, uh, you're too late. Wait, why is there a timer now? Mm. Oh, that was You must have turned the timer on. Oh, God. Chooms. Uh, Spelling oh, weird. yeah, you uncut. If you want to start up a new Ew. one, Tuna, <laughs> Tuna, if you want, if uh, if you want to start up a new one without the timer in it, if that if that hurts your game, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't need to know that about Tom. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. I feel like this is useful information. For seconds, you would have like, known anyway. what if we lose Tom and all they find is a body that's maimed except for the penis, and now we can recognize <laughs> it. It's possibly Tom. Penis. That is the rest of it Tom. horribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you. Could just be any person's penis. Well, that's what I'm just saying. It would narrow it down whether it, it could or could not be Tom. Like we'd be like, oh, right. uncircumcised so gonna... definitely wasn't Tom. Unless sure. I unless I had a a bris. Congratulations. No, what? All right, huh? <laughs> Who cares? So uh, we're gonna start What's the, the game. game code? So before a couple days ago, I asked you guys to bring in. It's four zero three zero nine zero. You're in the thing. I, I... Dan is now disconnected, but you're in. Yeah, exactly. Because I am. Four zero three zero nine zero. Okay. What is going on right now? This We're is going like 12 great. years old? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I feel like it's like when I used to try to explain rules to Chris when we played a board game. I love game how it tells me that space, like, bar, you, not listening. space Bar also works as the buzzer button, so that'll be good. I, I okay. literally couldn't care less about anything with the buzzer. So I asked you guys <laughs> to bring in the best <laughs> item that fit in the palm of your hand. You'll be getting points for each item. So since this is a free month... For everybody, you'll be able to watch this, yeah. so you'll be able to see what it yes. is. Okay. Yeah. So, Tom, you un- you, mm-hmm. you have to go first, considering okay. that Chris requested and Dan requested to go second and third, respectively. Uh, so, what is the best thing that you've brought in that fits in the palm of your hand? 
do 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 Right, okay, so Tom Brody in one ring. I'm really glad I didn't bring the thing I wanted to bring. Oh, God. So Tom brings in the one ring. Is it heavy? Oh, the weight of this is Yeah, what's the weight? Does it fit around the does it fit around the uncircumcised penis? No, definitely not. No? No. Can you get it on your pointer finger? But but the one ring, as we've seen from Fellowship of the Ring, depending on the appendage it's being applied to, actually changes size. Remember, because when he gets it off Sauron's finger, mm. it shrinks. But does so your... Wait, what if the dragon does, had gotten it? Would it have become right. massive? So wait, so yeah, Tom, if you put it on your member, it would shrink? Ooh, no, no, it gets so big. That was down. good. That Why was did you good. call it his member? Member. <laughs> I don't what is this, Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> So Tom, no, Tom, it, why it is, is it huge. Tom? Why is it's it the so, best it's, thing? It's massive. Well, uh, it, I mean, dude, you can control all of Middle Earth with this. But but the ring can. But can your ring do that? Yeah, one hundred percent. No, it's mm. actually mm. it's a, a mm. pretty mm. neat. Um, I, neat. It's funny because Brooke neat owns out. one. Brooke owns one for for some reason. Uh, uh, I forget why, she, but hers is really shit. And this okay. one's, uh, uh, ver- like, it's a legitimately nice ring. Legitimately. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Chris. <laughs> Chris, what is the what is the best thing you've brought in? I almost brought a replica as well, a prop replica on a chain. But I didn't because I couldn't. Uh, of the I'm one still ring? not in my. St- no, it would have been of the failsafe key from Lost. Mm. Um, oh, that, but I didn't that, because I've it's in that. a box. So I And I was just like, I don't feel like digging through it. So, mm-hmm. I wasn't sure if you were trying to do like a play on words and you're and mm. it was more like the best thing to fit in your hand, not actually the best right, thing, right. but more like whatever fits the best. So okay. I was like, okay, I just need to make sure it actually fits well in my hand more than like anything else. Okay. Um, so I brought in your I palm, just got in your palm, Tom. This really oh. nice, uh, oh. this really nice little Mario. It uh, right. you can like move his arms. Um, wow. It's actually like a really good. Um, can, I, can, really I see good. It, can I see it fit in your hand? Uh, I will just point the camera down in my hand so you can see it. What? Oh, my God. Oh God. We're really going for oh a roller no. coaster ride oh. here. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did you just what hold the it up? Fuck Wait, going? hold on. <laughs> All this well, for little Mario? To, looks, there definitely should be some Universal. points docked here. Universal Studios. Yeah, the new uh, the new Super Mario Land. This is one of the rides. <laughs> it wants to... Well, whenever I want to move the okay. the camera, right. it wants to... Uh, okay, now close it. Oh, it does fit pretty well in the palm of your well, hand. Well, no, but clo- close it, though. Mm. Yeah, it does. Tom, you're not judging this. Um, Tom's worried now. For he some is reason. worried. I don't know why. He is worried. It looks good. Where did um, you get it? And what, 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 of the I just got it. it. It's, it's this really nice Mario diorama set. I okay. actually have two of these. I was going to wow. talk about it this week, but since I'm so close to done, I decided not to talk about it until next week. But I'm working on um, hmm. I'm making custom shelves for my, my – I've been working on custom shelves for my console space. Wow. And the Lego NES – and my Switch are both going to be on one of the shelves mm-hmm. with, like, the Lego one ha- is painted Lego yellow, the shelf that it's on, and the Switch is going to be painted, like, Nintendo red. And so I got two. I got another set, and so that the green warp pipes will kind of connect to them as well. So I got the little Mario. There's a second set of diorama characters I have. So it'll be, like, a nice little setup. I'll actually show that. I'll have pictures and stuff to show that next week when I'm back in the studio, and it's complete. All right. So very nice. Go. Dan? All right, well, I went more, I guess, uh, I thought Alex was, was trying to play some weird game with, like, uh, the best thing, like, possible that you could fit in the... So I went with water. I could fit water <laughs> in the palm of my hand. 60% of the human body made up of this stuff. Life would be impossible without it. Also, it yeah, has no definite bad. shape. It takes the shape of whatever container you put it in. What else could do that? Mm. It could fit in mm. a little bit of the palm of my hand. It could fit mm. all over my hand. Whatever mm. I want to do with it. Right now, it's in a bottle in my hand. Water. Okay. Now, could you hold just the water? He's Can you show it. me what that looks like? Yeah, sure. No, no, not the bottle. No, I, I know you Just hold the water. <laughs> he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna cup his. I have some water no, in don't, my don't, hand. Don't get your computer damaged. Right, right, it's right, over right. the floor. Don't. It's over the floor right now. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Very good. Okay. <laughs> um, those are all great things. Uh, I think by definition, Dan did bring in the best thing. So I'm gonna award Dan three points. I'm gonna give Chris. Two points for the very nice looking Mario and Tom. Who the fuck could have seen this coming? Tom gets one. <laughs> and by the way, we're playing for a special prize that I will be sending one of you for the holidays if you win. All right. 
All right, so we're going to play pictures the, the first Tom's round. Thing. First round is called Rhyme Time. Okay? I'm going to give you two descriptions of games or things having to do with video games. Okay? And bo both answers are going to rhyme. Okay? Everyone understand? So, yeah, we're coming up oh, with so two. Oh, we're right. We're buzzing in. We're buzzing in. We're coming in. up with two yeah, rhyming answers in. to the question. Both answers rhyme. But I'm saying there. So each answer has two correct answers. You have to give them both, and they rhyme. I'm going to give you. Right. I'm going to describe something, and then I'm going to describe yeah. another thing, and I want you to tell me what those two things are, and they're going to rhyme. Okay. So I it's gotcha. like before and after almost, but no. rhyming. It's like. <laughs> okay. It's like the castle and oh, I got, I understand now. The whole point, the whole point of having two castle is that they castle. rhyme with each other. Castle, I get it. Yeah, castle and castle. That, those will be the answers. All right, ready. Because if go. you have two answers for the questions, but they don't rhyme, then they're not the right answer. I got it. Mm -hmm. That's correct. All right, so here you go. Here are your two things: Insomniac Games, TPS involving a Lombax and a Zony robot, and the most powerful special infected in Left 4 Dead. Dan? I believe that's Clank and Tank. I'm going to give it to you. The correct answer was Ratchet and Clank and the Tank. Well, but that is the rhyming part. <laughs> yes, that is correct. All right. Second one. Mm, okay. Rockstar's... Oh, shit. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rockstar's highest grossing video game and game where Fizco released the energy drink Overcharge. Can you say it again? I didn't. Ca I didn't understand the second. Rockstar's time. highest grossing video game, and game where Fizco released the energy drink Overcharge. Okay, uh, I buzzed. Okay, Tom. GTA Five and Sunset Overdrive. That is correct. I didn't know Very the good, second Tom. game. I knew the first game. I couldn't figure it out because I'm like, I'm like, it's oh, so I know it's Sunset Overdrive. I'm like, but Grand Theft Auto. Five. Doesn't oh, I had the other with... part. I had, I had, I knew it was going to auto, and I was you pretty sure had to five get together. was involved, but I wasn't sure yeah, auto. Yeah. All right, you ready? Or five. This is the third one. Mario's first foray into 3D racing, and 2018 game published by Sony, heavily rooted in Norse mythology. Chooms? Oh, I didn't even mean to, to press it. <laughs> Do you want to try to answer anyway? I, what was the second part? I'll give I'll I'll say this because Tom asked me to repeat it. 2018 game published by Sony, heavily rooted in Norse mythology. Okay, so that that is what I thought. All right, Mario Kart 64, God of War. That's correct. Yeah, very good. Shouldn't that be I an like, and? I know the first one's Mario Kart 64, but I don't even know what he said on the second part. I accidentally touched. It. Yes. <laughs> I, I know. I I accidentally touched it first, but then I, he was like he he was up to like Mario. And so I was like, oops, just hold it down. Hold it down. It doesn't count until I release it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a thing? Apparently. All right. So <laughs> rhyme time is done. So now we've got a new game. Mm. Welcome to the jumble. Okay. Both answers. <laughs> okay. Both answers are going to be, are going to be uh, using the same letters, but are going to spell two different answers. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. First are one is. Game related. Are they related? Are they video, video game, game related? related? Everything from here on out. Okay. Everything Just is video to make game sure. related. All right. Character that's got to go fast and what Mario collects. That would be Thomas. Sonic and coins. That is correct. I should have this in my hand. Second one. Halo 3 vehicle and what King K. Rule likely sits on. Chooms? Um, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> oh. Do you want me to read it again, or do you guys know what it is? I don't know the no. answer, but, but I, I know what you said. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't need to hear it again. Halo yeah. 3 vehicle, right? Yep, and what King K. Rule likely sits on. Mm. 
start a 10 second timer if you guys don't get it we'll just be done time's up correct answer was hornet and thrown mm. I could Oh, my God. It. I had thrown. I couldn't figure out the vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what the other thing was called. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Water Pokemon and the heat-seeking item in Mario Kart. Heat-seeking? Mm-hmm. Tom? Nah, I fucked up. I fucked up. Dan? <laughs> so, you got... Uh, which one was first? Uh, just so I can, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter which one's first. Whichever. Shelter and Red Shell. That's correct. Uh, it, it, right. I was thinking Blue Shell. I was, I was thinking Blue Shell I did as it well. first, and then I was yeah. like, wait a second. Shelter has dirt at the end, and that's red. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, last, last one for Welcome to the Jumble. Right. Ground-type Pokemon called the Lonely Pokemon... And what spring Mario does? What spring Mario does? Yeah, what does spring Mario do from Mario Galaxy? And then the lonely Pokemon. Dan? Cubone and Bounce. That is correct, Dan. Wait, what? <laughs> Cubone and Bounce. Uh, oh, Cubone is with a C. Well, very good. Yeah. All right, so the next game is called Game Plus. What it is, I've a so there's a game. I'll I'll clear it. So what what it is is it's a I basically I've re I've added a letter to a game title to make it a different game. You have to figure out what letter I've added to that game title based on the description I'm gonna read to you. We'll see if you get it on the first one. If you don't, fuck it. So here we go. A maze puzzle arcade game where the title character creates formal agreements with four uniquely colored ghosts. Dan? Pact Man. That is correct. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought you were giving us a title with a letter. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah I get it. No, all right. No, I all get right. it so now. now you that understand. was good. Pact yeah. Man. Okay. Pact Man. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. That was so great, Dan. Well done. All right. Yeah. All right, so this second one, John Marston is apprehensive about saving his family. Uh, uncut. <laughs> Red Dread Redemption. That is correct, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, dude. See, I wasn't sure if it was Red Dead Redemption, but like I was pretty I, I, sure, I don't and know. that's where I was is stuck. Is dread and apprehension like a synonym? It feels like they're. I mean, I, I googled okay. dread synonym <laughs> and came up with that. <laughs> cool. All right, third one. Samus um. Aran accidentally discovers time travel in this obscure 2004 cult classic. I don't know the name of the game. <laughs> it's add a letter or replace a letter? Add a letter. Chooms? And Metroid Primer. Correct. <laughs> the prime part, I couldn't figure out. I knew it was Metroid something, and I couldn't figure out the last Fuck, part. Fuck, I was just doing Metroid shit. Alex, mm -hmm. I thought for a second it might be Supernova, so it's like Super Metroid... <laughs> <laughs> Super Metro Noba? I was like, how do I... How does that work? That's so yeah. funny. Um, okay, last one is 2016 augmented reality mobile game to capture a great deity. Dan? Pokemon God. Correct. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Pokemon God. <laughs> Pokemon God. <laughs> All right. That's how I actually learned God wasn't yeah. real. <laughs> All right, here we go. This one's called this this group of games is called Lames. 
because instead of mm-hmm. adding a letter, I've replaced a letter. <laughs> so I've taken a letter out and replaced it with something else to make it a different game. Are you okay. ready? Yep. All right. Sandbox video game where you collect grapes and brew intoxicating drinks. Dan? Winecraft. Correct. <laughs> I honestly forgot what we were. Oh, doing. you changed. You, you changed a letter. Yeah, that's what you said. I, I wish you, we had examples before. We I know. I sh- I'm sorry. I should have. I'm understanding. Done the rules are going quick for me. Ween is understanding. I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah. like, so wait. You're just you're changing a letter. I thought you were yeah. removing a letter. No, you're I replacing. Remove and replace. replace is what he said. I replaced the letter replace. in the game. Remove and replace. All right. Okay. You ready? Yep. All right. In this first, in this FPS franchise. Leisurely stroll and relax on the beaches of Normandy, in Caratan, and in Nuketown. I don't remember what we're doing again. Dan? <laughs> I mean, not Dan. Sorry. Uncut. 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 <laughs> I was going to say Walk of Duty, but that doesn't work. Mm-mm. We're replacing a word? You're replacing, replacing a letter. A letter. One, one letter. letter is being changed. So instead okay. of a letter being added, it's a, it's a letter being changed. A leisurely stroll. I could change it. In this FPS franchise, relax on the beaches of Normandy in Caratan and in Nuketown. <laughs> I'll give you 10 seconds. Just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time's up. It, oh, choose. Wait. Go ahead. Mall of Duty. No, it was Mall. Calm. Oh my God. <laughs> calm. 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 Of calm. Duty. calm of Duty. <laughs> calm, calm of Duty. duty. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> that was tough. Oh, that was tough. Uh, oh. Calm of duty. Yeah, you know. Was... Relax, chill out, <laughs> hang out. I was like, I was like, does Chang? Can you make Chang in now? <laughs> Chang in now? <laughs> yeah, duty? exactly. Um, all right, this one, this one isn't actually a lames. I fucked up. This is a games plus, but we're gonna do it anyway. Bush, Ob- this is you're adding a letter. You're adding. A okay. Letter. So wait, we're President, back to the. This original. is the last round again. This yeah. is the last round, but I'm doing it again because okay. I fucked up, as I usually okay. do. All right. So Bush, Obama, Clinton, and Trump must battle an outbreak of zombies. <laughs> Dad's fucking face. I'll give you guys 10 seconds here. Wait, we're, this is add a letter? Add a letter. Right? Yep. Sorry. Add a letter. All right, time's up. Left Jooms. for head of state. No, President <laughs> President Evil. Oh, <laughs> I was on the ro- I was on the wrong path. <laughs> yeah, me too, one hundred percent. I definitely I thought like, it was left oh. for dead. All left right. for head of state. Here we go. Pre- um, President Evil is fucking brilliant, and I'm sure that's like some kind of like B movie. Like I think we just watched it for three film. years. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. we just lived through it. Yeah, All right, we, so we're we, good. We live President Evil. We are now done with the buzzer. You don't need the buzzer anymore. Forget the buzzer. Now you're uh-huh. going to be texting me multiple choice answers. And then we have this. Okay. Is, so this round is called First Lines. This game, it's like it, it, friends. It's when Alex's has, house yeah. of games. Yeah. Cl- climb, it's my house of games, the bitch. monkey mountain. And then it, yeah, it's my house of games, bamboozled. bitch. All right. I'm All right. Texting. So in Halo 3. Right. Mm. I'm going to read you three first lines. You have to tell me which is the actual real first line of Halo 3. Oh, God. So A mm. is they let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Mm. B is they let me choose. Mm. Did I ever tell mm. you that? And C is they let me decide. Did I ever tell you that? All right. A, A was pick, right? B was P- choose. Yep. Pick, choose, decide. Pick, choose, decide. All right. Um, Tom, what did you say? 
I said it was pick. Okay, and Dan and Chris said? Choose. Choose. Correct answer is pick. Tom wow. gets a point. Mm. They let me pick. All right, the next one is from Pokemon Red and Blue. Mm. Is the first line from Pokemon Red and Blue. Hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. I'm Professor Oak. Or is it B? Hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak. Or is it, <laughs> hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. People call me Professor Oak. Ooh. Curved ball. Mm. A curved ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What'd you all say? B. You all B, said B. Yeah. You all get a point. That is correct. It's the one that made the least sense, so I went with that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. The next one is from Super Mario 64. Is it A, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've made a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool Peach. Or is it B, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool Peach. Or is it C, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've baked a case, cake for you. Yours sincerely, Princess Toadstool Peach. Can you, can you read the first two again? Um, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've made a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool Peach. B is, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool Peach. Or C, Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I've baked a cake for you. Yours sincerely, Princess Toadstool Peach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, you all picked different answers. I will tell you that Chris got it correct with B. I've mm. baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool Peach. Mm. Yes. All right. So those were first lines. Now we have... Four questions, and this is who's the closest. So all you have to do is give me the closest, no prices right rules. Who's ever the closest is going to get a point. So there's only four of these, and then the game is over. The year the first video game was released. The year the very first video game was apparently released. Uh, wait, what does this mean? Like in arcades or console? Uh, it's not going to give us shit. I'm not going to, yeah. It's such bullshit question. It is. It's like it's whoever a, gets closest. It's whoever gets closest to this oh, year, yeah. Fuck. And it's based on my bullshit research. So put that in your pipe. I mean, it would be nice if you would just tell us, like, if you mean like a console or arcade. Are you saying or a nineteen? Computer. Are you saying nineteen sixty one there, Tom? You no, know, eighteen sixty one. All right, just making sure. No, nineteen sixty one. Oh, my bad. Nineteen sixty one. Well, I fucked that up. Oh yeah, because now it's to someone's totally gonna nail it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Tom said 1961. Chris says 1960. Dan said 1955. The correct answer is 1950 with mm. Birdie the Brain. Yeah, so I went with Dan's the point. Back to the Future year. That's because I good. figured it would be a Back to the Future year. <laughs> so I wrote down in this. I wrote down in my notes, since I definitely got shit for that last question, the year Pong was released. Wait, did you really write that? <laughs> I really did. I would show oh, you, but it would show you so the answers. That's fucking good. <laughs> I would Pong show you this, released. right? but it would show you what the answers are. And I wrote shit using dollar sign exclamation point because I was writing this on my work computer. <laughs> like triple guessing myself to the point where I'm going to be wrong. I think this is actually... Uh, the last one, I figured it was probably in the 50s and because Tom said 1961, okay. I was like, well, I'll do 1960. Tried, tried I'll price is right, right him. But I, mm -hmm. my ultimate price is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris, did you put and in I thought, an answer? I don't have an answer from you. Oh. Um, Hello? All right. Ooh. Chris says 1971. Dan said 1974. Tom got it right on the nose with 1972. Yes. Okay. I just got prizes right. You That's did just amazing. Get well, Tom just won All both right. showcases. He did. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one is the total number of coins in Super Mario 64 
in all 15 worlds. Including blue, uh, red coins? Or blue coins? I don't know. I just went on the website. Regular coins. <laughs> Damn it, Alex. <laughs> Tom, that can't be your answer. I. Uh, okay. We're gonna accept it. I'm telling you right now, you're. Yeah, way off. I mean, uh, <laughs> but am I way off less? I don't. You're way fucking off. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No I one knows know. this game, Tuna. No one knows this game. This game sucks. Well, it's like Halo 2. But well, it's you just and in the 15 worlds <laughs> or like in the game total. So 15. No, yeah. I, not counting the coins around the castle and shit. The coins oh, in okay. the worlds. Just those coins. See? I'm but guessing Tom guessed something like 300. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I wouldn't be too happy with your answer there either, pal. No, but like, I, you didn't make fun of me for it, so it has to be closer than Tom's. Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tom, what did you guess? 120. What? Anybody who's played Super Mario is laughing. See, I, did, right I did math based on one, 120 per level. <laughs> yeah. Which I think, did you mean to give me so many zeros? That... No, but I'll count it as what I sent. I sent eighteen thousand. Oops. You said yeah. He said eighteen thousand. <laughs> Wait. And Chris said okay. twenty three hundred. The correct answer is two thousand ninety, giving Chris the point. Oh, okay, good. So either way, I would have lost. Yeah, you would have lost. I figured it's probably somewhere around like a hundred and fifty coins a level. Yes. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, thinking of this. I, the stars. Could, the stars. stars. Yeah. yeah. Idiot. Okay, this is the last question. <laughs> so. Jack. Or maybe I just like good video games. Too, Tuna, you know? Tuna's mean oh, house of games. That's not just a diss on me. That's the diss on everybody who listens to this podcast. <laughs> it's all right. Tom liked Immortals Phoenix Rising, which I can't find a single person. That I mean, it's that much game. better yeah. than That's Moon- so true. Uh, it was much better than Moon Waker. It has a fucking 80-something. Uh... Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people have. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Right. Last, than this is the last question. Breath of the Wild. Much better than Breath of the Wild. Tuna's house of games. Since we're, since we're into no speed way. running. Right with Astro's Playhouse. Mm. What is the current Playroom. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time glitchless any percent speed run any percent in minutes? So, for instance, there is a speed run in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time that is just fastest to beat Ganon that uses glitches. Yeah. That's like seven minutes. It's not that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Can you list the metric? So the metric is glitchless any percent, meaning they got all three uh, emer like uh, what are they called stones? Went to the temple of time. Wait, don't 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 tell them everything that they have to do. Okay, they beat the game without using glitches, and they got they have to. Okay, and we're and we're telling you a time. Does that mean, I'm assuming that means that you might be able to skip certain things. You can't. Okay, Same. I'll tell you what. You, I'll tell you this. Because you have to know this. You cannot skip any okay. temple. The temples cannot be skipped. Oh, okay. Temples cannot be skipped. You have to do the temples. Okay, a glitchless run. Mm-hmm. I'm going to change my answer then. In, okay, and we're, we're, we're giving you a time. You're right? giving me a time in minutes. Mm. Okay, glitchless run. I think people have done it in this. Okay. All right. We're going to do this. Cool. Tom, you need to convert that to minutes. What the hell did he send Oh, to minutes? And I sent, sent me something blank hours and blank minutes. I need oh. to send it in minutes. I was about to do that exact thing. All right. So then I need to come. I thought it was I mean, like some magical myself, other version of still. time. I could do it myself, but I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I thought like he sent you some weird, like algorithm or something instead of a time like four billion you seconds. want me to convert it to seconds too <laughs> no, or? you're good you're good okay uh what did everyone say tom i said 133 minutes okay dan i, I said 44 minutes and chris i figure there's six temples mm-hmm. 
You've got the three temples at the beginning also. You've got the tutorial area. There's mm-hmm. cutscenes you can't skip. True. So I, I guess somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes for each of those things. So I'm at 210 minutes, three and a half hours. Chris, you are the closest. The correct answer was 219 minutes. Wow. A guy named <sighs> Chef Bear has done it in three hours and 39 minutes as of three weeks ago. Uh, holy Bear. fuck. So is it... How is Bear spelled? B-E-A-R. Like the okay. paint. B-E-H. Um, well, no, no, There's no, some things like, that he did that I'm I watched curious. the whole thing because I'm a loser. But um, he didn't have to get, like, the Eye of Truth. He didn't have to get the Fire Arrows. Yeah. There's a bunch of things he didn't have to get. Um, but that's, that's not. And then, uh, Tom, since you asked, I don't know if you can read that. Can, is it backward or can you read where it says right there, since I definitely got shit for this? Not backwards. Yeah, since I definitely got shit for this. I see it. Yeah. Yep. No, I, believe, I believed you. All right. <sighs> Well, folks, the winner, so here's the scores. The winner is Dan with 11 points, and Tom and Chris tied with 8 points. All right. I'd like, to thank, I'd like to thank Water. I Alex, would thank what is water. he getting? You'll find out. What? Well, I can't tell you now. It's got to be a surprise when he gets it. I'll find out. Mm. I actually He'll find out, and he'll bring year. it on the podcast. And if it's, any, um, if, it's, if, if it's anything like my previous prize for winning <laughs> Jeopardy, I would be I would be really excited to get it. I will say, Tuna, <laughs> if you are choosing between He's which escort to get me, uh, I, I prefer longer hair, if that matters. Which escort? Are you going to make this? <laughs> Are you going to make this he's again for the get, holiday episode? He's going to get you a else? fucking prostitute with head down to a fucking ass. <laughs> Am I going to do this again? Um, I will tell you right now, doing this was really hard. But um, to get, like, anagrams and, you know, all this other crap. But I'll try mm-hmm. to make it again. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Yeah, yeah it was good. Very nice. Sur- surprisingly very good. Nice. Surprisingly not, yeah. not terrible. <laughs> surprisingly not yeah, did very stupid. Good job. Surprisingly, not. What did Alex yeah. eat for breakfast? By the way, that's why I wanted to go last in the uh, in the the show and tell round because I was mm-hmm. like, if I present this first, everyone else changes theirs. Right. I think that's fair. That's fair. Um, that's all I got. Great. So next week is a another episode. Everyone, again, you can watch these on our Patreon page. It is going to be free for everyone to check out. Um, Next week is our last standard episode of the season, because after that, we have our winter episode, which is a game showdown. Uh, And then the week after that, New Year's week, is the finale, which will be a power hour, which, by the way, we got to order our hot chips, because we're going to do a hot chip challenge. Oh, shit, yeah. We're going to do a live hot chip challenge, and then we're going to do the power hour. Can you send... Well, we'll talk about afterwards. I just want to know which hot chips we're eating. Yeah, uh, there's... there. Yeah. There's it's a specific famous. brand. You'll, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not so in tune into the world of the hot chips. Tom, you're on so Twitter it's all the literally, time. You're more in so, tune than me. It, Tom, like, give me a break. It's it, not a thing on Twitter. So No, it's on... It definitely it, is. It, it, it's everywhere. But anyway, Tom, it's this giant chip just called hot the hot chip, and it's supposedly right. spicy as fuck. I haven't had it, so... Right. Uh, well, there we go. It's out. a one chip. You it's get one chip. The warp pipe. Yeah, like actually has a little like it's hard to do while holding it, but it has a little like lever on. The you should back, have added so that, that to your palm. Well, I felt like it, the, if, if it had to do with how it fits in the palm, like it fits in my palm, but it doesn't necessarily fit in the hand. You know what I mean? It's larger. It palm. Like, Don't worry. There were no rules. There were no rules. Also, yeah, I was going to tell you, like with me, especially, I mean, you could totally fudge this shit and I, and I might just give you. <laughs> points I'm just saying you're sus. You're sus. But like, yeah. But tr- truthfully, really if we do this holding, again but... and I require a, a certain thing to be brought, you know, I'll, sell I'll sell me on it. Sell me the pen. Sell me the pen. Sell you on the pen. This is my cock. It is in my hand. Uh... This is my <laughs> dick. It, it's, it's not circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> it's very well done. All right. I'm, I'm going to start the outro yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Are we done? So the outro music is playing. I know you guys can't hear it, da, but da, da. Uh, before you go check out Alex, where he's going to tell you to check him out, go check out our Patreon page. There's a link in the show notes, and you can watch this show. Uh, like, for real, just fucking stop listening on your app. And go to the website and watch it instead. Alex. Yeah. Tuna Targaryen on Twitter. Tuna Targaryen on PlayStation. And Tuna Space Targaryen on Xbox. Danny Boy. I am Big BigDanny15 on Twitter. 
on Twitch, on PlayStation, and the Big Dan 815 on Xbox. Are you going to change that? Just even a month? I can't. It won't let me. <laughs> Big Dan 815 is still active oh, somewhere. Right, right, right. I don't know why. <laughs> Tom? I'm not paying. Uh, great. <laughs> Great Brit home on each and every platform. Great Brit bomb. Uh, nice. I am at Christian underscore Humes. I am at The Chooms on Twitch, Xbox, and PlayStation Network. If you haven't hit me up on PlayStation Network, do so. If you, especially if you got Asher's Playroom, we can do some speedrun times. Go head to head. We're on Rank Podcast. Check out our Patreon. Enjoy it for free this month and next. And until the next time, stay safe and stay unranked. Suck that uncut cock. Wow. Wow. Oh, that was very explicit. <laughs> so um, who do we think... Great game, Alex. Who do we, thank you very much. So who do we think a lot of fun. is the Jedi that will show up in Mandalorian? Luke? Mm. Mace Windu? Oh, I have several. I mean, you haven't... So you haven't watched Rebels yet, so... Ezra? Yeah. That's who you think <laughs> Tuna, Tuna threw... Tuna set that in a way where it's like, I bet you won't know that I know this guy's name. No, <laughs> but do you know... Ezra? <laughs> uh, have you finished Rebels? I haven't even started it, pal. But like, uh, I, I, watched, <laughs> okay. I watched the, I watched this Nerd Soup channel. Got it on YouTube, and they spoiled that for me. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So oh, yeah, fuck. I mean, the way that things end in Star Wars Rebels, yeah, would allude to possibly that being picked up. Uh, okay. Also, Luke, obviously, it could it could be a number. I don't of things. Cal Kestis. I doubt it'll be Mace yeah, it Windu. Cal. <laughs> you don't think Windu? I uh, no, I think that I, I think the same no no yelling is not what's missing on this show. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the, 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 the easiest answer is it's going to be Ezra because it's a Dave Filoni project. We've already had Ahsoka, and mm. like Chris said, it's been set up for that. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to get a Jedi for a while. I think part of what they're setting up is that like this kid is too attached to Mando, and like they're going to be together for a while. Yep. Like it's going to, this show's, this story is going to end in some kind of a tragedy, I think. It, it might end with the death yeah. of Mando and then the kid going on like with someone alone for a while, which is why like it's not around in the sequel trilogy because it's pretty good. It can't be or yeah, like well, they need maybe to make it's a fucking Mando young Ben Solo. Game. What if what? young ass Ben Solo is the thing that you know oh. calls out to? He'd have to be super young. He would be, but what if you know he's attuned now with the that, force? Now that the cartel has him, right? Because um, you have Gus Fring. The cartel uh, <laughs> has a Gus Fring, yeah. Yeah, and what and if the little uh, baby handcuffs? Who what the if there's no Jedi? Maybe handcuffs. it's a, maybe I no, love those, what? Alex. I love those. <laughs> when he's passed Alex, when out he, and his hands. Are... <laughs> when when he said that, when he goes, put the like, cuff get him, him in the shackles, or whatever. <laughs> I, yeah, cuff him. I, I go to Teresa. I'm like, what? Cuff him <laughs> with what? With and what? then they take out these tiny <laughs> cuffs. I was like, get the in all fairness, they yeah. are just chasing him around. So like, they knew. I know. They know how big they need the cuffs. I know. But, but yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. We need the child size handcuffs, please. That's like when um, we watched Yu Gi Oh! and then all of a sudden Kaiba pulls out like an interdimensional matter transporter. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Is- where were you hiding this? Like, what are you talking about? I'm so fucking. Get out of here with that bull. But what shit. if he gets trained by a Sith instead? No. Ooh. I mean, I like, I like them teasing that, you know? I like them. Yeah, it's not bad. You know, I, I also like the idea of like. So fucking uh, Gus Fring, Moff Gideon, whatever. He was like flinging. He was like holding the dark saber up, right? Like teasing mm-hmm. him, and like Yoda is like, "Ooh!" And he's like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, not yet. You can't use this." And I was just Grogu. like, "I was just a Grogu." Did you just sorry. say Yoda when they literally named the dude? Oh my two god! Ago? Oh my god! I'm sorry that I'm not on the Grogu train. And- I love Grogu. Fuck on him, Baby Yoda. Grogu's anyway, a great name. So he's holding the Baby thing. Yoda. For fucking well, you're a fucking weirdo. So he's holding the thing out for Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's holding out. He's holding Tuna out. Was like he saber. was the child the whole time. <laughs> he was yeah, exactly. Well, I always had this thing in my mind of like because you know in in the marketing and stuff they he's the child he was the child right and still is kind of that's child. what they would call him on the show right. But it, I just I love the idea of like uh Bob, uh, Bob Iger in a meeting with like. Nike, because they're going to do, like, a baby a Grogu shoe, right? And, like, someone at Nike's like, yeah, so here's the Baby Yoda shoe. Uh, I mean, the child. And then, like, Bob Iger is like, all right, that uh, puts a hit on that guy. He's like, he needs to die. Um, But anyway, so he held out the dark saber, was waving it in front of Grogu's face, and was like, ah, not yet. And then just in my mind, I'm just, like, picturing tiny 
Grogu with this giant fucking lightsaber. <laughs> Grogu's reactions might be one of my favorite things on TV right now. Oh, Just his mannerisms, oh God, this the season. way they, the way that like his character. animations are crazy. now, yeah. crazy now, now that he says his name when he says his name, Grogu, and he's like, <laughs> and he turns ah! his head. And yeah, I'm like, it's so oh, good. Oh my God. But like God, I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely ready for Mando to take the helmet off and leave it off. I think that's what we're headed there. I, I everything that this season has led up to. I don't know about been. leaving it off, but I think he's going to be taking it off. That's all I, I mean, know, but, but I feel like he should have it off. He definitely needs it because, dude, That's probably this a is the first thing. time in the fucking the history of Star Wars that armor has ever worked. He's taking shots left and right, just and everyone yeah. else is like fucking dying. I will say, I loved the like um, the Boba Fett fight. Man, he was crushing people's skulls with yeah. that thing. I like mm. that was brutal. I don't get so this good. about the stormtroopers. Why does mm. their armor seemingly do nothing ever? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's... You can shoot them anywhere in the armor, and they're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's an unfortunate precedent that was just kind of set by the original movies that they can't really <laughs> yeah. fix now. And yeah, now- I mean they basically decided the armor's there just to dehumanize them. Mm. It's basically like just that's just what the point of the helmets clothing. and the armor okay. is. Yeah. yeah, and they they've definitely made the ways in which they die. Like for example, the Bro- Boba Fett thing. Like he is crushing through that stuff. Mm-hmm. That they've they've made they've tried to make the ways that they die a little bit more believable by making them like more violent and stuff. But yeah, there are times where you're just like, boo, it's like, ah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's so, it's funny. But um, yeah, I think with everything that they set up with when he met Bo-Katan and she was like, oh, you're a fucking religious nut job. Uh, We take off our helmets and now Boba Fett being like, I'm just as much of a Mandalorian as you, but I'm, you know, I'm free to take off his helmet or whatever. Like, he's definitely losing faith in his, you know, in the way, right? This is the way. So, yeah. But maybe he will learn that it's not the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of want, I want Boba Fett to die. Uh, <laughs> he was looking chonky in that uniform when he put it on. Yes, he was, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Yeah, it did I look thought that funny. was very funny. I was like, you could have shot this differently. You did not need these ankles. Like, right. he looks I, I, really big here. Do you think are those are those I really like the death troopers. I was like, oh shit, we haven't seen droids. Yeah. Like fighting cool. droids. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed that he was like calling the the dark troopers and I was like, Oh, okay, we're gonna see some shit and all they do is boop, fly down for grab baby Yoda, boop, and fly back up like I wouldn't be shocked if they're made from Mandalorian armor from Beskar. Mm. Which is probably mm. like cause those I think the Dark Troopers I think are the same ones that he used in the purging of Mandalore. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, right. maybe. I mean, when we saw the purge, it was actual droids. It was super, super, yeah. super droids. It's all very confusing. And then the thing with the it, with the troopers is there are death troopers, there are dark troopers, there are purge troopers. Like, yeah. there's all kinds of troopers. We'll have to see which ones these turn. Super troopers. Super troopers. For sure. Yeah. Power troopers. Pooper troopers. <laughs> Pooper troopers. Pooper scoopers. Yeah, those are the worst. Got a lot of them. Yeah. Only two episodes left. So, and now they, they have to go get Bill Burr before they can <laughs> oh, uh, right. save Grogu. I was we watching... got to go get Bill Burr before we can save Grogu. I forget Great. I was watching something and they renamed all the characters in The Mandalorian. And then they were like, and Bill Burr as Bill Burr. Yeah. <laughs> I sent that to you guys. Oh, you sent it to us? Okay. I wasn't yeah. somewhere else. Okay. Then I credit yeah. Chris was finding it, whatever it was. It was well, amazing. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. It's uh, very funny. Very excited for next week. Well, Andrews.